Today on the October episode of the Borderlands Show, Fran and I give our first impressions of Bloody Harvest. Head of Gearbox Story Group Randy Varnell is here to talk about a spoiler-filled discussion of the Borderlands 3 story, and we preview November's big event, Takedown, at Malawan's Black Site. And Greg, don't we also have a special Halloween shift go for everybody? We sure do, Fran. But before all that, welcome to the Borderlands Show, Vault Hunters. <laughs> And just like that, Fran, episode two. Here we are. The comments and all the reviews said they won't be back. Here we are, though. <laughs> Here we are We today. said it's too late now. <laughs> With another shift code, like we said. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Of course, we're giving away some Halloween heads for your Vault Hunters. Uh, well, shift code will be coming up later in the episode. If you've never watched the Borderlands show before, congratulations. It's episode two. You haven't missed much. It'll be easy to catch up. That's but right. But every month, uh, me, Greg Miller, this, Fran Mirabella the third, you know him as FM3 underscore on Twitch, we come together to talk about Borderlands, what's happening, and what will be happening previewing the next month of content. Uh, we want you to be part of the show of course subscribe twitch.tv slash borderlands youtube.com slash borderlands game and then send us all your viewer mail for uh, whoever we have on the show mm -hmm. kind of funny.com slash borderlands right now let's catch up a bit on what's been happening in the borderlands 3 universe like i said uh, uh this episode we'll be giving you a shift code if you're on the youtube it's probably the first comment it's probably gonna upload right. it at this point <laughs> at what the code actually is uh you'll get some halloween heads there but Fran, one of the things uh, we wanted to talk about here, uh, talk to you, of course, as the bridge between Gearbox, uh, we want to talk about the 30-day patch and what's been happening, right? All the stuff that's yeah. been leading up on it, right? Uh, Fran, what have you seen in terms of all these mini patches they've been putting out, everything that's been happening with Borderlands? Yeah, the micro patches or the yeah. hot fixes or, or whatever you want to call them. We've seen a lot of activity, actually, that came right after launch. Uh, character balances, loot balance stuff. Um, a lot of that happened in pretty quick succession. So yeah. if you actually haven't been keeping an eye on that, you, you should take a look, depending on what characters you play or what you're sure. you know looking for in there. But we saw Oh, and don't worry. As a flak main, that's right. I'm going to have some questions for Randy <laughs> about what's been happening with these hot fixes. You know what I mean? You're spoiled. I'm Zane. Over I am here. spoiled. You're right. I'm Zane. We need more power. As Zane, right? Okay, okay, no, but they've, okay. they've been making a lot of uh, right. adjustments, and, and it's I, something they've been paying very close attention to. And it's one of those things we've been talking to them about, right? Uh, the uh, quickness and the ability and the number of those hot fixes that have been coming. That's abnormal, right? I think you're going to start seeing that slow down. Now that they're hitting the stride with what they want Borderlands 3 to be based on what you guys want it to be and the way it's all been collaborating together. Yep. It seems like that's conversations happening, but we can talk to Randy Yeah, it, it tends to happen that way, but I would say, like, keep the feedback coming in. You know, oh, that's course, what yeah, we're yeah. here to help with. Like, get your questions on the show, any of the big community issues we want to talk about, and hopefully when and uh, how these patches come out, we'll be, you know, getting that feedback in. Uh, a big one for you, uh, Fran, the Echo Cast extension yeah. has been added to consoles finally. Yes, yeah, yeah, super yeah, yeah. excited about that. Um, uh, I know uh, I have been using it a ton uh, over on Twitch, on PC. On PC. Don't hate on PC. I am. It's so it tore us apart, Fran. We're supposed to play this game together. Do you remember those <laughs> exactly. days? Exactly. We still can, Greg. We can, we can now when you come right back. In. Be cooptive. Cooptive? Um, no, anyway. Co cooperative, yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, um, yeah, I've been using it a lot over on Twitch on PC, but now it has come to consoles. and you Super can cool. We it. ran it through, you know, uh, Borderlands uh, show episode one about it, but, I mean, top level, right, is that people log in with their shift stuff. They use they link up their accounts, their Twitch account, their Gearbox account. They go in. They watch you play a game. You open a red chest, and bam, they have a chance to win some loot. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's really cool. There's also the badass events in the game, which are one of my uh, most beloved things that came with Echo Cast, where you actually can like fight back against the streamer yeah. and like buff the enemy, give it health, level it up. It's really cool, um, and they'll be doing more stuff with that in the future. I got to talk to the team at TwitchCon, actually, oh, nice. and you know, again, pass along a lot of feedback. It's already really cool, but they're again, something they're still looking at that I think we can expect updates in the future. And on top of that, Fran, consoles are also finally getting photo mode. It's happening, everybody. You can go to Borderlands.com, find out all the details for it. You're allowed to clap for that, Kevin. <laughs> Everyone's allowed to clap for consoles, all right? Here we come. The tortoise is crossing the finish line, everybody. <laughs> On top of that, though, uh, if you want to use photo mode, if you go to Borderlands.com, they are holding a special photo mode contest over there where you can win a collector's edition just by using photo mode and posting your photos. Information on all this, of course, Borderlands.com. You can go there and get all your information. But... News that might have flown under the radar if you're not on that Borderlands.com. It is the 10th anniversary of Borderlands. Can you believe yeah. it, Fran? October 20th, 2009. Oh, I remember it's like it's yesterday, actually, because I remember when Borderlands hit. It was so much hype. Yeah. But, yeah, it's a little hard to believe it's already been 10 years, though. So. I can't get over it. I mean, that was the thing of, like, you know, for Borderlands 3 to arrive this year after such 
a long gap, right? You know, seven years since Borderlands 2 mm-hmm. to get there now. And then also on the back of that, be like, oh, yeah, it was also 10 years since Borderlands 1. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Fran, 10 years ago, you and I were working together at a place called IGN.com. That's right. And there, a young boy, Charles <laughs> Onyet, reviewed Borderlands. I thought his uh, first paragraph from his review, I, blew, I went to the archives of IGN today, blew the dust off it. I wanted to read it to you. All right. It's that undeniable impulse that pokes at the pleasure centers of the brain when you're looking at that sleek and impossibly flat television at the front of the electronics store. How much better and brighter would life be if only you could bring it home? You consider what's in your wallet, what kind of space rests between credit balance and limit, maybe for a second what your family might think, and perhaps more importantly, how jealous your friends would be. It's what drives economies that thrive on consumerism, and that urge to snatch up glittering new toys is what keeps the action energized in Gearbox's Borderlands, a first-person shooter title that caters to the thief, hero, and adventurer lurking in us all. I think he captured the sentiment pretty well back then. I love Charles. Love the fact that he's like that flat TV. Like, you know what I mean? 2009 <laughs> was such a, we all had giant CRTs in the house still. That was the big glorious thing at the time was just having a nice flat screen plasma or something like that, right? Fran, when you look back over these last 10 year, years, this decade, what has been the impact of Borderlands, you think? Well, many people know I'm, uh, you know, I was first and foremost a Destiny player. You know, mm-hmm. I'm newer to the Borderlands community. You know, I've played them all now, but um, I've always loved looter shooters. I always knew that I wanted to play play Borderlands, but part of it was because I got so, you know, into these other looter shooters out there. But it is undeniable, uh, you know, a game came out in 2009, Borderlands, and it has influenced uh, just how how these looter shooters are today. It 100%. Is, it, it, I mean, it was the blueprint. Charles's next line in the review, I don't have it in my document here, but literally is like, this is basically a Diablo loot. Like, if you don't, if yes. he doesn't call it looter shooter because nobody had that name yet, right? Like, this is the game that really made that a thing. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it really took that model. I mean, I was a big fan of Diablo uh, before oh, yeah. all these games as well. I just, you know, I love loot and, and the grind. And um, I think when we first heard about it, we weren't sure if it could be pulled off, right? Yeah. And man, that's what made the magic in Borderlands at the time was like, we all played it. We're like, not only is this a fun shooter, but holy cow, I want to grind out all this stuff. And it's got the ca- the characters on top of it. Yeah. So it brought all these amazing things together. And uh, what an amazing place to be, you know, 10 years later. And see all the modern improvements now brought to the game. Well, and- I mean, it, you know, I think it's so interesting to look back 10 years ago and not have known what we were getting into, right? I remember Borderlands being pitched to me as Charles pitches it, right? Of this looter shooter, not calling it that. Uh, it's about gear. It's about loot. And I remember being like, oh, I'm not really, I don't know. When I jumped to play it for Game of the Year and mm-hmm. was like, oh my gosh, it's funny and it's trying to do these different things. It was I wasn't drawn in by the mechanics, even though that's what's kept yeah. me around. I was drawn in by the characters. I was drawn in by the mm-hmm. stories. I, you know, I wanted to know more about Pandora, uh, Pandora Sanctuary, uh, you know, everything that's going on with Claptrap, right? Like these yep. characters that mean so much to me. Yeah, you make a good point. It, what, like for me, it spoke to me in that way about the loot and all that. But for many others, it was just the flair and the style. Sure. And uh, to see, you know, they've stuck to that, stuck to yeah. their guns to this day. I You know, when I played Borderlands 3, that was, again, something that stuck out. I'm like, man, this game just has so much style, so much voice acting, so much going on with the characters. And, um, you know, yeah, I know that's something... Exactly. Yeah, yeah, many, yeah. many great voices. And it's another thing, too, you know, 10 years from Humble Beginnings, right, of that in 2009, that review with Charles and what that game was, to now Borderlands 3. And since we did this, right, uh, Borderlands 3 ships 5 million units in five days. Yeah. More than 5 million units in five days. You're like, God. Yeah. I guess I'm, it, I feel good that I'm not the only person that missed this game, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, it's funny that uh, Borderlands as a franchise is one of the, you know, top selling franchises out there. Yeah. So it's, it's just a huge game. And um, it's been awesome to see the game finally launch, you know, and be out there in the new community. It seems like everybody's, you know, loving it. There's yeah. obviously a feedback. And we're going over that on the show. There's new events coming up. There's seasonal events. Yeah. All that and stuff. that was the big thing, too. I mean, even like you're talking about seasonal events and like, you know, Bloody Harvest, which of course we're going to talk about. It's Bloody Harvest season, clearly, uh, is the idea, too of like the 10th anniversary came with multiple weeks of content right week one was the bonus boss loot week two Mm -hmm. was the rare spawn hunt week three was show me the iridium uh week four was mayhem on twitch and then week five uh october 29th through november 4th spooky surprise right like i love that idea that there is a reward to this that there's a living breathing game here with a history that uh, gearbox wants to actually you know support and take care of an audience they understand yeah, and I think that's what where you see a little bit of this loop happening, you know, where Borderlands influenced all these other games now that have mm. taken the notes. But now, you know, these other Please games also, I know they're buckets of blood, everybody, actually. <laughs> uh, just keeping in theme with Bloody Harvest. But um, 
now these are like more reactive events. I think we're seeing Gearbox trying out to do stuff that's a little more reactive. Yeah. And I have to say out of these, the rare spawn hunt for me was one of my favorites where I was like, I need this, I need a shield. And I'm like, where do I got to do that? They told you in, you know, the list, which bosses to go to. Yeah. And you could just grind that out. And like, that's the type of player I am. And so I would love to see more events like that, but it was great to see an entire month of them. And so I'm looking forward to see what else they do. I mean, for me lines. personally, like, again, it's, uh, I love a reason to come back to a game I love, right? How many games do you do where you put in, 60 hours 70 hours 100 hours and then you put it down and then you oh there's an event but i don't know if i really want mm -hmm. to for me per, you know like show me the iridium the event right yeah when that dropped and i was like oh there's discounts oh well, yeah. I've, I've been sitting on this iridium and i have been hemming and hawing about what i want or i want to buy everything out why not jump back on why not get in right now and try to go through and buy what i need yep yeah, yeah. and inevitably it's like you go in to just like roll some iridium at boxy slots but then you're like actually i'm gonna do this mission and like again it brings the community back together there's more people to play with at these yep. times so again looking forward to more events on you know you know these are just uh i don't even know what we call these but these are like these in-game weekly events that they launch that are special we've also got the seasonal event which is bloody harvest yeah and we've got you know takedown which we're going to talk, talk about, about which today. is a, another big event um a more permanent thing right and so uh it's just cool to see that a lot's happening uh, to your point it's not that the game just came out yeah and that's it yeah. it is a living breathing thing and we're going to see a lot more of that over the next year and to your point when we when i was talking uh, planning the show obviously with gearbox and 2k one of the things they were talking about with this uh, five week you know anniversary event that it's a multi week test to the devs uh, they're paying attention to all the feedback that they're getting and they plan on using it for future events so exactly. keep on talking and saying what you want out of these kind of things i mean you know obviously we're your voice but yeah if you we, want things that we don't you want you want some I, zane crap go ahead <laughs> exactly i mean i think the feedback is simple though it's like i really liked these events we would like more as fast as possible <laughs> i feel like that's not going to be uncommon in the community uh, i think overall the events were great and again people are going to have their favorites for me it was rare spawn hunt uh just getting targeted really, loot let me sell that's let me buy and sell things you just want to buy <laughs> awesome i want to buy things i want to get more i want to get more iridium and i want to get the things i'm spending it on cheaper Fair because enough. i want to get I love all that stuff, and I want more of that. I want I want yeah. there to be like a huge update. And guess what? There's a million more items to get. Right? Yeah, that would be cool too. Yeah. Actually, more things to spend uh, your iridium on. Speaking of spending your real life iridium, Greg Way, uh, there's an October sale promotion as well. Uh, this week you can save 25 percent on Borderlands 3 DLC. One is coming up fast, and the Super Deluxe Edition includes the season pass. So now's the time to get your friends to join you for some co-op fun, so they can get ready to play DLC one with you. Yep. But Fran, I digress. Mm. You don't have to worry about DLC one. It's bloody harvest season. That's right. The time of pumpkins and ghouls and all sorts of things as Captain Haunt blood takes Blood waterfalls. On. Exactly, blood water. Fran, we have gotten to just today play yeah. the preview stuff for Bloody Harvest, right? Yep. To run through. Uh, we both took on Captain Haunt. I seemed, I, I, you know, I, 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 you were over there. You were playing. You, you were playing as your main, right? Yep. Because you seemed like you had an easier time than I did. You <laughs> seemed like you didn't I was, get. I got clowned out at one point. I was playing as Amara. I wasn't oh, ready did for, you? I, yeah, I was diving in. I wanted to see what it was, and it was like, you know, I got down to that last, you know, fourth of hell. Oh, I got clowned and, out. I was like, Dah. yeah. What yeah. did you think? What do you? What's your first impression of Bloody Harvest? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, a couple quick notes on it too. Remember, Bloody Harvest is something you can just jump into. It's not like you have to unlock it. Right. It's just you know, uh, it was a seasonal event. And we got a preview. Maurice look will at be it. on Sanctuary. You can't miss something. <laughs> exactly. Maurice is cool and funny. Some of the dialogue that's in there, but um, yeah, yeah, like this whole I, undercurrent to him that like everything he says is like he's trying to be. He, he says he's trying to be friendly, but right. it sounds like he just wants to kill yeah, you. Yeah, you're like, ah, this sounds dangerous. Yeah. And yeah, you so you go through this warp portal or whatever, and you're you're in this really cool new environment. I think yeah. that's the coolest thing that stood out to me. You know, we've seen so much of all these new worlds and stuff in Borderlands yeah. 3, and we actually got another new space. It didn't feel like, you know, I was in some other area that just we hung up, like like our studio, that we just put a pumpkin in, <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, in Pandora. It doesn't have that feeling. It's a totally new area. It's super spooky there's new particle effects and all that kick and so i just love the vibe of it and um you know i'm looking forward to, to you know seeing what loot has come out of it and all that stuff but um but yeah i just love the vibe and uh, and seriously right like buck uh, waterfalls of blood you know oh, yeah. definitely well, that was the whole thing for an event you know, like if this. we're going to heck like they wanted us and when we talked about it last week right that was the whole thing about it to get in there yeah and like all right what is it going to be you know borderlands episode one we got to debut first footage of it so you saw jack lanterns you saw psychos hanging from trees you saw this like uh gravestones and green stuff and it was like cool is it going to feel like i'm on another world in the galaxy that is kind of trying to be spooky, or right. is it going to feel like they actually, this has a vibe, it has a thing, it's not just reskinned enemies with new names, right? Playing it from the, you know, the world we did of jumping through the portal, going into heck, going in and fighting all these things, 
I think it, it it nails it from that you know one level of us going through and fighting Captain Hong, where it did feel like okay, cool, this is a seasonal environment, but it's not just a simple reskin. Like the, yeah. I'm going through, I'm playing this. Like the music alone for when we're fighting oh, Captain yeah. Haunt, which was so like I don't even I'm not good at music, but what it was like <laughs> it was this weird like not techno beat, but it had like this spooky mix to it, and it but it wasn't just it was. like clanging or chains clanging around dubstepy yeah. rocky. Like, and it's, it felt it's great. It gave it gave that uh, fight like a personality outside of just going on yeah. against a guy with a giant you know skull for a head. Yeah, the whole event. It, it, so again, this is a place you hop into, you fight you know Captain Haunt. This is free content. You got to remember and set your expectation for that. And yes, you do go out into the world, and uh, you know now the enemies are sort of possessed or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. You get terrorized, which is a new gameplay mechanic that they added for the event. Um, so you know, again, it's a free event. I loved the area they created, but actually going out into the world, you know, even though you go to these um, places that you've already been to, the new gameplay mechanic actually of uh, getting terrorized and all is pretty cool. Yeah. You get a new skill. It's a little like anointed. You get certain drops that if you're terrorized, right, you'll get certain buffs and stuff. So it gives you new things to look for new drops to look for of course it has me going back to old environments right for hectoplasm i'm at the, you know one yeah. of the side missions you get later on from maurice going out doing that fighting these different enemies i really do like this idea that when you kill certain enemies now during the event in especially out in the open world when you're fighting them then that like giant skull wants to fight you if you can kill that you've just killed the guy now you have the possessed skull coming at you right if you kill that it drops loot if it hits you you get nothing like it's like all right cool yeah and honestly in shooters i always love that as you know more things to shoot so you yeah. get that after <laughs> phase of like I killed the enemy and I was like oh crap now I'm gonna get terrorized if I don't shoot these skulls coming at me yeah. it's a little bit of target practice for you and again it's just like a uh, maybe a simple gameplay mechanic and concept but it adds a lot but again to the after what nine, what have we done 90 80 hours of this game <laughs> yeah. like just having a just skull having a little bit. there to come at you and ch it chases me around the map yeah. and I can't outrun it really it was like alright this is cool like I like that and especially when I was doing the Captain Haunt fight right and he's this huge hulking beast that we've seen and he's sending them out and then putting up portals to shield himself i'm shooting yep. them it's yeah i mean fun. honestly if, if this is what is maybe to come more you know we get more of this in the future yeah again there's a free yeah, seasonal this is, event this is not, DLC. not the dlc this is not dlc one this yeah. is a free event here you go exactly it is you know seasonal it won't be around forever so you have to get in and play it yep so yeah. like, again if this is something uh, that's to come in the future we'll get more of that stuff um i i don't know that i'd have a ton of notes i mean you're always going to want more oh, it's sure, like, that was my thing too it was like what's yeah. the con for it i'm like I'm interested to see where this goes, how long it is. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Captain Han, I think, is the meat of the fight. Or the you know the, yeah, the, the whole the, the fight is the meat of the uh, bloody harvest event. Yes. But then for me to go out in the world and look for more hectoplasm, how many missions does Maurice have? Well, you know, I know it, it, we're giving away obviously the shift code today that gives you different Halloween heads. What are the other you know we saw the bloody harvest skins and stuff like that? Like mm -hmm. how uh, how am I going through and getting them? What is the, how am I trading on all right. this stuff? Yeah, again, like you're always going to want more. So I you know we've been doing this a long time, so I do have to put that whoa, whoa. hat on. It's like it's a free seasonal event. Uh, uh, yes, what I want a ton of exclusive legendaries and new like five new bosses and like of course but uh, I honestly I really did my enjoy my time with what I played and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how again they do stuff that is seasonal because this is Halloween so what's next you know are we going to exactly. get something uh, snowy or you know we'll sure, see yeah, what yeah. happens well, I mean you're just going to I mean, we, well, I mean we, you're going to skip over Thanksgiving Oh, okay. Now, granted that maybe that's <laughs> See, too American. See, you always want more. Maybe that's too American. You know what I mean? Maybe it's too soon. Could be, yeah. Because we miss Canadian things. Canadian things done, happened. dude. I'm good. You, you, you uh, prepared for all the comments that we're going to be like, we already had our Thanksgiving. Yeah, does, do the British people have them? Do they? Have <laughs> no, don't, let's not go down that road, Greg. Oh, we know, Gavner. <laughs> we know about all the holidays. Bean and kidney pie for Thanksgiving. <laughs> you know what I mean? I love you. You're British guys. Don't worry about Perfect. it. Perfect. Uh, but anyway, I had I had uh, fun with the event and looking forward Me to it. Me too. Yeah, that. I'm excited to get into it on my real save with my real flack. So again, I'm going to have some questions for Randy about That's right. Uh, yeah, I'm mean, going to get in there and actually see what it's all about. Yeah. But Fran. Yes. Speaking of exciting things that are going to happen here, hmm. are you excited to do a spoiler-filled discussion with Randy? Oh, definitely. Yeah, if you played the story and you got to the end, uh, we are sitting down with the head of Gearbox's story group. Yeah, that's right. You nailed it. I like title. how question we at the end. <laughs> We're all set for this. And then this morning, they're like, hey, Randy's title changed. We're like, oh, no. <laughs> um, but no, like, honestly, uh, being able to go over all these diesels is going to be really cool. Yeah. Uh, before we get into that, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have Randy talk about some of your community concerns. So if you're not wanting spoilers, you're still slowly working your way through the game, which I can't imagine anyone crazy enough to watch this show is no spoilers in the very front then we'll get into it but for right now ladies and gentlemen let's welcome randy as i live and breathe randy varnell yay, yay. yay. yes 
<laughs> there it is. Just like the claps for consoles. Uh, Randy, thank you so much for coming to join us. Today. Hey, it's a pleasure. Um, so we have a whole bunch of stuff for you. All right. Yes. We're gonna wait. Go. Later, we're spoiling stuff. Later, not right now. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. Pretty much immediately, we want to do community concerns. But before yeah. any of that, I want you to introduce yourself <laughs> to these fine people. How long have you been at Gearbox? And then what the hell does head of Gearbox Story Group mean? Um, so I've been at Gearbox at ten years. This is my. Wow. You know, we talked about uh, how this is the ten year anniversary for Borderlands. Yeah. I literally came on right before Borderlands was launched. Borderlands One, and you so take all the credit. Like, I, high yeah, high it was high all high me. The all party. me. Those last two months, right before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so so much. Uh, no, but it was really cool. I've been here ten years, uh, and I've, I've I've done a lot of different things. I've been a producer, I've been a creative director. Story Group is something we put together for for uh, Borderlands Three. It was originally called the Narrative Team. So if you've seen me talk about okay. the game and all that, I was managing producer of Narrative or some really long. And it got it, like, so many words, and we talked to some people, and it's like that's a lot to remember. Let's just yeah, simplify it. You really chiseled it down, didn't right? You? <laughs> Senior executive lead of head Narrative. Right. I'm the head story of Gearbox no, Story Group. Everybody, head of Gearbox Story Group. Right. Well, well, we love the idea. I love Story Group. I'm you know we talked earlier. I'm a big Star Wars nerd, and I've, I've always Hell watched yeah. how uh, how Lucasfilm puts together, and you know they've got a story group there that really looks at all of the things that they do for anything that has the Star Wars brand on it. And, sure. and Gearbox, of course, Borderlands is a big brand for us. We're yeah. very excited about everything we've done for there, everything we are going to do for there. A lot of exciting plans we're going to talk about. We've got other properties and other games that we're always working on. So our story group, our writers, our, our, our cinematics department, uh, even our lore department where we're building up now, just to keep everything communicating and consistent, we touch a little bit of everything on there. So I get to, I get to play it every Every one of these great stories and properties and, and help help us tell excellent stories for, for everybody. Now, this is a loaded question. Yes. Don't take it the wrong way. <laughs> Do you feel that role or that position, I guess, was lacking before? It didn't exist. Do you think there was things you saw that were like, oh, well, the, like, why are we doing it this way? And the, why are they saying this in the game when historically this had happened or something to that effect? It's it's yes and no. I mean, okay. it's kind of a factor of scale, right? Like when we when we made Borderlands 1 and Borderlands 2, those were much smaller teams. Sure. And every game we continue to get larger and larger and larger. And at some point, it's one of the reasons we, we put the, the, the original writing team together. Like Borderlands 2 had a writer. We have four on Borderlands Three. Yeah. So uh, because of the game of the scale, we we actually wrote like two hundred and fifty thousand words of dialogue. We wow. wrote a, 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 a amount of writing equal to what was in Game of Thrones. Wow. Uh, for that, and it's all tucked in different places of the game, and it, it, it's consumed differently. But it, I don't think it was weaker before. But the game as the games get bigger, you have to think of how you organize a team, and, and it just it comes down to practical math. Like only so many people can write so many things in so much time. So we we had to we had to grow up. And we, our ambitions are growing. You know, we sure. want to get better at storytelling. We want to get better at, at really drawing people in and, and balancing all that. Well, when we get to the spoiler discussion in a little bit, we'll get in the weeds of that and, and pull that apart. But I don't think we've ever lacked, but I'm really excited about our future. That's awesome. All right. Let's not talk about the future, Randy. <laughs> Let's talk about the present. Uh, yes. Fran and I have been scouring the internet looking for community concerns, right? right? And of course, so many of you wrote in kindoffunny.com slash Borderlands. Thank you so much. Uh, we wanted, obviously, the part, big part of the show is helping you, Gearbox, talk to the audience a little bit uh, better. It seems to me, Fran, there's been about three major concerns everybody agrees with. Would you agree with that? Yeah, these come up a lot. So the ones we saw, right, were the size of the general loot pool and that players would like to see more loot drops tied to bosses and activities. Uh, the next one, number two, uh, the major nerfs and buffs to Vault Hunters are divisive, right? Why are they happening? Why are you just picking on Flack? You know what I mean? <laughs> Fran, stay back for a second. Flack was Zane perfect. Flack was perfect. And then you keep coming in. Overpower. It's a PvE. I'll get to. And then number three, uh, bank space. Everybody keeps wanting more bank space, right? Curtis R. wrote in, who mains Amara, and said, uh, how do we farm legendaries when there's only 50 slots in our bank? Which seems to delete itself on occasion. Please add more bank space. I love the game. All right, and you just go to me and a go. Okay, yeah, go. Well, you got three where, things sure. to go from. Where do you want to go from? Uh, I mean, let's just start down the down the top. Like number one, the, the first thing. I, the first thing I'll say is just make a general statement. Like you guys, thank you so much for like. You're doing the same thing that we are. You're listening to the community. You're really watching. We are the, the community. <laughs> you are the community. So so thank you. But 
we listen to everyone. We're definitely, we, we don't obviously advertise ourselves a lot there, but we're, as our as a design team, we're on Reddit, we're on Instagram, we're on we're sure. Twitter, Facebook, everywhere. We obsessively watch streamers and other people in the communities. We listen, watch all the, like, we're not supposed to, but we, we, we <laughs> listen to everything. We read all the reviews. We read long, we, and we have a lot of debates about those back at Gearbox. So if anybody's wondering, yes, Gearbox is there. We are watching what you say. And because we don't say anything, Thing doesn't mean that we agree or disagree or that we are we, we're, we're, yeah we're ignoring or we're planning like we have plans and I think you know with this show and with some other things we have uh, in the future we want to increase the amount of communication that we have with everyone to let everybody know what we're thinking what we're planning but the, the, I'll just make a blanket statement first like the three things that you said absolutely we we recognize them as things that are very important to our community and we want to respond to those okay could you actually spell out for people what is it normally that it comes down to is it just making the decision or is it actually the amount of work and the priorities or like in other words uh why don't you look at one of these and say okay yeah fine we'll do we'll do that for you that's a great question because it is actually a really complicated set of factors right if it were just as we were talking earlier it was just as simple as like you know tossing yeah. a switch like we agree i'm gonna challenge change my inventory from 50 to five i'm just put an extra zero there 500 if it was that simple we would have already done it you know we, we would have sure. put it out there and we did it. it it's never it's almost never that simple and like we've we've already like this show highlights we're working on a lot of other content as well. Now we to be clear, so, you're the reason the dates move all the time. Why it's always we end up saying it's this it's date ish. I'm sorry, it's this guy. We it's just you, Randy. <laughs> if I'm, uh, just call me Randy's scapegoat. You know, whatever. It's but no, it is. It's it's. There's a lot of stuff that goes on. You know, uh, we we. I'll, I'll just go in reverse order. You know, the, oh, sure, the, yeah, yeah. the 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 bank slot one is one that comes up a lot. And the, you know, I was telling you earlier. I mean, maybe there's some kind of math we have. Like, you know, for every billion guns we drop, we give you five bank slots or something. I, I don't know if that's the right ratio. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's somewhere it somebody like decided. The, an executive in a boardroom <laughs> right. said that's what well, maybe be. ten bank slots, but. No, we. I, I'm. I'm. Look, I've played our game. I'm already uh, all the way through a True Vault Hunter playthrough with Flack as my yeah, my main as well. And I'm I'm playing with the. I, no, Zane was my second, uh, uh, and, and uh, Amara was my third. Mose is still behind because my my my. I have a co-op buddy I play with, and he he was playing uh, a Mose and has already done all that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we're trying to bounce that up, but. I'm right there with everyone else. Like I'm having to, I'm playing the game the same way. I don't have any more bank slots than anyone else, and I'm having to juggle the legendaries and all that too. We're very aware of it. Gearbox for us, the bank space uh, is actually tied up in a lot of the things that we're having to work through technically with performance and uh, and stability. Gotcha. So uh, it, it's in it's in the UI. There's a lot of things. I know some people have already talked about that. So we want to do it. It's a lot more complicated than we wanted it to be and a lot of people wanted it to be. So we're just taking the time to be sure that we don't otherwise hurt performance and stability while we do it. And we're going we're gonna to get to it as soon as we can. It's not going to be nearly as soon as people want. Sure. They want it right now. Not going to be right uh, now. It's going to, yeah. but but uh, we really do hope that we'll find some opportunities to do that. But we're definitely aware it's a major community nice. concern. Yeah, it's always nice to know you agree, and it's on the list. Like sometimes yeah. just hearing that goes a really long way. So. I hope so. Well, I, yeah, I mean that, that has to be one of the most frustrating things for your side of the game, right? Is how do you message this stuff? What do you say? What don't you say? Because it's your point, right? If you're just going to tweet at somebody who says it, it you know, oh no, we're looking into, we're working on that. Then people are like, oh man, next patch. They yeah. run away. We like right. Like you have to yeah. get this information out there, but you have to also manage the message. And there is, I'm sure, a list already of things you're working on or need to work on that outrank the bank. I wish one day it would, it would kind of be interesting if we could ever do it, like a video that shows like the actual daily life cycle of the emotional stability of a developer. Uh, because <laughs> we, we go through this thing, we're like, we'll go out to the forum and we're like, yeah, I totally agree with them. We've got to fix that. And we go run to the office of the person who fixes it. We got to fix that today. Well, here's the things. So, like, oh. Oh, oh, and then it's like, well, can we tell anybody? Like, you know, we, we go through all of the, all of this and like, we want, like if we could wave a magic wand and change it and fix it and all that. But sometimes these are like the, the bank's place thing. Yeah. You, you've got to be very careful in how we expand and fix that and be sure that we don't negatively impact yeah. other parts of the game. There's already been a couple of the, the earlier patches, the micro patches we did that, that they went out and they've, they've, you know, some of them were, we'll get, we'll get into that. Some of them are a little debatable in what they did. Some of them actually created some instability. So we're trying to add some processes where we're being very careful about how we look at the patches, the patch process, definitely letting the community wait, add weight to all of those for the priority. But that all uh, always has to 
get compared against how long it takes, how much it costs, and what are the other things that, that we're trying to get out. A lot of great new content, too. You've got to do both. You have yeah. to fix the issues, and you have to add new content because we really want to keep the game vibrant as long as we can. Yeah, I don't want to wait on this takedown stuff. But, right. But I also want this, so I, right. I want both. I, you mentioned it, right? Like I, At the top of the show, I talked about how you guys had mentioned to me beforehand that the micro patches are slowing down a clip, right? Like You guys did it a lot in the beginning, I think, trying to get the game where it needed to be and running well or whatever, it, now it's going to get to more of what you're talking about, making decisions that have weight to it, right? Is that fair? Yeah, we want to be sure that, that the, one, that they, they get tested as thorough as we can before they go out, so we're sure that we know what they do. Because yeah. sometimes, I mean, uh, working on software is kind of like surgery. You know, you're kind of like, well, I hope this medicine takes effect. Nope, okay, that had an un- I've grown a left arm. I guess that did have <laughs> unusual consequences. Man, so. you have a terrible doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I would, yeah, you don't want In me to. In surgery, <laughs> giving you the medicine. <laughs> But we, we have to slow down a little bit to be sure that we understand all the ramifications of what we do and all that. And it's not going to slow down a lot. By the way, we still want to well, – the reason that we have a micro patch system is so that we can look at serious issues that come up, especially – like it's one of the consequences of adding new content. When we add a takedown, when we add Bloody Harvest, that's new code that we're putting in the system, and it's yeah, great. Yeah. And inevitably, you know, we, we test things as thoroughly as we, we can. We have a big QA team. We work with a publisher to do that. We all do that. But inevitably, something comes out, like, and we need to we need to be able to correct something fast. So we will, but we do we are trying to take that second breath with micro patches to be sure that we maintain the quality of the game and the integrity of the game that people uh, uh, need to mm-hmm. be able to really enjoy it. Now you keep hitting around about stuff you did before, right? That maybe changed things people didn't want. I assume my apology is coming for Flack. <laughs> I assume that's what's happening because you have he, he has guy. been unjustly persecuted in all of these micro patches. I'll have you know, and the Reddit agrees with me. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll, I'll, there's an interesting thing you know talking about Vault Hunter balance that, yeah. that comes in and and uh, again I'm he- I'm head of story I get to work with design I've done some design before so I really I know what a show for you to show uh, up this is great I'm going to talk about <laughs> all right, right, let me talk about all these I'm going to make promises for people <laughs> you know, somebody's got to take responsibility yeah, for here that we third go. arm I'm here so let's go <laughs> let's let's change the universe um, no we're we're looking at all of that and again. One of the big questions we have that I know you guys have heard and we've already talked a little bit about is, hey, it's a PvE game. Why why would you ever nerf anything? Well, there's actually a really interesting science between a, a game that has growth in it and how how we play and how long our interest. Mm. One thing that we get to see, like we have we have a lot of dev cheats back in the dev build at home. And if we're ever trying to play through and then suddenly give ourselves like, I want every legendary right now. Bloop, your interest goes way down. And in a game that's all about what am I finding? What am I getting? What's going to drop from that enemy? Is it going to drop from that boss? Finding that right balance between being strong and still having something to grow for is really, really, really important. So I think Borderlands 3, is, especially if you compare it to 2 and other games, is already super, super generous in a lot of that. And so when we when we nerf flak and when we nerf some guns and we we do some other things like that, what we're really trying to look for is is the places where we've seen builds usually from the community that are outliers. When you get a combination of things that like, look, we've got billions of guns in our game. We can't test sure. every combination. Uh, we try to get as many of the the, the the things as we can. But eventually, someone posts a video like, oh, wow, that's not intended. You They're shouldn't be able to do that. Boss, right? yeah. I remember Borderlands 2 when it was, it was uh, um, oh, what's his face? The, the big boss... Um, uh, vermin, verminiferous, I think was okay. it was right, and you found the the interaction between the the, the gun, the conference call, and the B shield mm-hmm. that you could almost one shot him, and that was found like a couple of weeks out of launch, and we were watching the videos then, and we're like, oh no 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 oh gosh that <laughs> it just it, it's supposed to be a challenging fight, and yeah. someone found this weird combination of math that took all the chance. Congratulations, by the way. Like Borderlands has that. We never want to completely kill that ability that you found a combination that exceeds well beyond yeah. the curve. But we are looking at the curve. Yeah. And we are looking at those really high-level combinations that are just beyond exploitative and trying to bring those in line to protect the health of the game o- over the long time. And I know some people are like, yeah, but you should never. I just want to have fun. Like, there's so many other ways to have fun. fun though, and, we're right? not, yeah. and we still want to acknowledge it's a PvE game. We're not going to hyperbalance for PvP like like you would in other games. Yeah. yeah, other games would need to. We're going to keep that spark in there. So there are, you know, there are some adjustments that'll come that'll be nerfs. We're all also looking at things to power up. 
uh, with flack, in, in particular, one of the things we're looking at the viability of the pets. We've heard a lot mm, of feedback mm. that the pets, especially as you get into true vault hunter mode and later game play, the pets just die too fast or don't do enough damage to matter. You know, you really like me. I play with the the, the jabber, and I like that the jabber can revive me because I die a lot, yeah. right? And that's a good utility, but it needs to have more viability than that. So we'll look from stuff there. We're looking at Iron Bear late game for Moe's. We think that Iron Bear, while well, early game is a tremendous juggernaut in the battlefield, late game is, a, is needs a little bit of love. Uh, and then uh, with, yeah, you know, I'm going to talk, here we go, with Zane. <laughs> with Zane. Uh, we're looking at several improvements on Zane, uh, mm -hmm. especially working things with his cryo build. I think we're looking at some improvements with um, uh, uh, his his uptime. When, when he's in his action skill, right. you get combat uh, bonuses and all kill that. Kill skills uh, and all that. The kill skills, it's not as high as we want it to be. So I think Zane's going to get a lift in the future. So no hard commitments here on that, but these are the things that we're that we're looking into and aware of and have some patches coming up soon. Yeah, yeah like I said, it's always nice to know that you're looking and then you know maybe to what you're getting at you want a sense of accomplishment and and change um do you think like when you uh you know create some of these balances and you get into a build that like okay that's working uh do you think over time that you're going to need to change it that it changes up like in other words that you need to drive people towards use zane as an example you know i haven't seen a ton of people using barrier um you know maybe i'm not the best zane player in the world but in other words do you feel like at certain points across the lifespan of Borderlands 3, you're going to need to shift the meta uh, just to mix things up? Or is it more about what the players are doing? I, I think in a game like Borderlands 3, you know, like if we were in, like we, we you know, we did we did uh, Battleborn a few years ago. And in that being a competitive game with a lot of characters that had some complexity in the builds, we definitely thought about the long-term meta. And in those games, you usually want some kind of mechanic where every so often you're just, I just want to shuffle this a little bit mm -hmm. to keep it fresh and interesting from people. I don't think that we would do that just because we're bored in Borderlands, <laughs> right? That's I think, really turned on its head. <laughs> I think Borderlands, there's so much content coming out between the the the, the seasonal content, the takedowns, the yeah. DLC, the events and all that. We're going to mess up our own meta Anyway, and I right. think we are, are much, much more. I, I, you know, again, I'm going to say things that Paul Sage, our Paul's creative director, like, Stop he's like, Stop talking, Stop Randy. <laughs> but I really think for us, uh, getting that new content in and then just finding out where those edges are and, and adjusting it is probably all the meta adjustment we need in our game. But we are always watching and always listening. We'd love to hear what, what you guys find, what the community finds, and, and always willing to take a look at, at what people really want to see to keep the game exciting. We supported Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel a long time after yeah. lunch. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Lunch. After lunch. <laughs> I had lunch early after lunch uh, and would like to continue to do that with Borderlands 3. We have more people and more aggressive plans than we've ever had on a project at Gearbox before for post-launch support on this. So I think... I think you're going to see a lot of great stuff coming awesome. out. Awesome. And so the one at the top, you are looking at the general loot pool as well. And yeah, yeah. Finding stuff in the right places or more places, so to speak. S yes, absolutely. And I, I think, you know, when I talked to Paul about this, uh, what, what he's seeing right now is a general idea that the people who like to play the long game, they really like the farmability on bosses. I think the big thing that people are really looking for is a little bit more predictability mm -hmm. in where things drop. One of the problems that we actually have is our general loot pool. You know, legendaries can drop from anything is bigger than it was in Borderlands 2. Sure. And some of the best legendaries in the game night right now are dropping in that pool and not on the specific boss pool. So it gets frustrating to try to find a specific thing. You know, we did some things in the recent events to like certain things, drop things a little bit more yeah. and all that to, to, to help with that. Cool. Yeah, Rare Spawn was nice to spell it out where it's going to be. Thanks. And we're we're looking for that type of thing and maybe some of those types of solutions to help. But yeah, our, our goal is definitely to get that thing where you have bosses or you have mini bosses that drop certain things. You know those pools. You know that you can go and, and get on that and hunt those down. We want that loot hunt to be there. So we'll, we'll make some shifts. I think there's some things coming in the next couple of weeks that are mm -hmm. going to tweak that a little bit. There are also some legendaries that are like boss legendaries that are not as powerful as they need to be. Yeah. So we're looking at some boosts for some legendaries coming up and some of those loot pools soon that will help some of those things that are farmable items maybe get on par with the, the other ones. And so I, I think that'll help. Yeah, I think it'll bring some excitement to, in addition to sitting out there just farming Nighthawken, which is like an amazing SMG in the game. Game. Like, I think there's some cool looking guns that, to your point, you're yeah. like, well, it's okay, but all I'm going to use is Nighthawk and all the time, <laughs> yeah. or a certain pistol here, or there. And so, yeah, making some of those adjustments will go along. And I think, I think you mentioned earlier, I will add this to your previous question. You asked if we would ever tweak or adjust the meta. I think if we ever see a, a moment that there's a gun or a grenade mod that you that everybody's you can have. Oh, I think no. at that point we would want to see where we can boost others, or we would tap that down a little bit. We want to understand why that's is. 
Because it's a game with billions of pieces of gear in sure, it. And we, we want to create a lot of viability within the loot pools. You realize now if you nerf Nighthawk, and everyone's going to blame me for bringing it up on the show. So just to be clear, <laughs> please, do please do it. Please do it. As much as we can, we like to buff rather than nerf. Right, right, Every right. once in a while, we do find things, like I said, that are way out of the curve sure, yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. We have to bring those down a little bit to, to be able... You know, otherwise you get in this kind of uh, you know inflation game with damage sure. and and then, yeah, and then everything's just then everything's crazy. Yeah, you know, yeah. All okay. right, ladies and gentlemen, this is your shot. If you haven't beaten the story for Borderlands Three, you can click off or mute it or whatever. I guess don't click off. We still have a shift code coming up, but <laughs> stick around by mute it or whatever because we're going in. This is your last chance. Okay, Randy. Yes. You fucking killed Lilith. <laughs> oh, God. Or Me. did you? Or did you? I don't know. You know what I mean? Oh, I don't know. You do know. You're the head of the, you got the head of Gearbox Story Group. I do know, but we're, am I going to tell? We're yeah. asking you, did you kill Lilith? Is that what happened? Is Lilith dead? Wow, you're going to put me on the spot huh? on camera. You're the guy. Uh, Lilith, is, <laughs> Lilith is gone. Okay. Okay. Is she the moon now? Is she like Mogo in DC Comics? <laughs> Lil Lilith is gone. Okay. And uh, the... the I think the only thing that I really want to say right now, as far as that's concerned, is sure. uh, is uh, uh, there will be more answers for the little story some point in the future. Okay. Uh, I don't know when. Uh, probably not a DLC. Lilith, I mean, she's pulled a lot of weight for three games. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. And even was in, you know, the the pre-sequel for a little bit, you know, yeah. and, and do some, she's had a lot of responsibility for a long time, and we love her. She's in, in so many ways, like, Borderlands 3 is her story in a lot of ways. Oh, yeah. ways. We, we can dig into that a little bit, but uh, we, we want to let her take a little bit of a breath. We want to we wanna let her have a, a, a break and all that. So She's she gone. is definitely gone for a while. Uh, uh, I, I, yeah, that's, I, that's, that's probably all I want to say. That's fine. Probably all I want to say. Was that a hard decision to make? Yes. It, yeah, was it? Because I can, on the one hand, understand, oh, this is cool. Let's do something different. I thought it was so different to have her powered down for this story, right? Like, that was out of the realm of what we knew from Lilith. But it also, I mean, that alone is like a weird decision if you're a Lilith fan to then actually kill her, have her sacrifice herself at the end, right? It's a completely different ball of wax. Well, what we really look about with that is, is character arcs, how characters grow and change over time. And it's one of my things that I, I think it's my favorite thing about this game for what it really does to kind of cap off a little story in, in this phase of, of the Borderlands universe, right? Uh, Lilith starts off just like all the other Vault Hunters do in Borderlands 1. She just, she's a mercenary. I remember the first time I played Lilith, and she was one of the first times I realized how cool Borderlands could be when I got a sniper rifle with her and I shot someone, and she, she got a crit, and she giggled. You know, and, and that's one of the first things I like. Lilith was out there just like every other kind of vault hunter. They're they're kind of heroes and kind of not. Sometimes you know they're kind of they're kind of in that weird gray moral land a lot of, of times. And and she started off just being that that wasteland, just barely above that wasteland bandit. Yeah. In Borderlands Two, when you get there, you know you find out that she's taken on this mysterious siren identity as the Firehawk. Uh, she's been in and out of a relationship with Roland, another of the vault hunters from Borderlands Two. She's being worshipped, but that she start to see that hero. Hero emerged more and more from there. You know, she takes the iridium. She saves the the, the city sanctuary in Borderlands Two. You know, she she does all of that and has a great a great arc through that. And then at the very end of the game, I don't know if you if you ever did this. I always love to ask people. In Borderlands Two at the yeah. end, when you have the choice whether or not to kill Handsome, when when Handsome Jack is there and he's monologuing, you can shoot him. It tells you to shoot Handsome Jack. If you don't, I feel like I didn't. It, but then I thought somebody else got to him anyway, right? If you don't, Lilith walks across. Well, that's what it was, yeah. And pops him. She, so she takes that, and you see that leadership emerging in her. Like, like no, this is going to happen. I, he's messed with my friends. He's messed with my people. I'm going to protect. So she really does start taking on this protective element for the the kind of our, our crimson raiders, our, 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 our citizens of sanctuary. Uh, we even did a whole DLC with their name in it. You know, yeah. the, the the extra DLC five for Borderlands two. We put out the summer Commander Lilith and the fight for Sanctuary. One, both to explain what happened to that Sanctuary and where the Vault Key was, and to get people refreshed on characters. But it is another part in Lilith's arc. You see her not just accidentally inheriting the Crimson Raiders from Roland in, in Borderlands two, 
but her actually taking intentional steps to, to step up into leadership. And again, using that firehawk, that siren ability that she has as, as big kind of save the day mechanics and that. And she couldn't save Sanctuary, but she saved all the people on it, which for her was the most important thing. So for us, when you get to Borderlands 3... Now yeah. I get to answer your question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna you're gonna regret soon having the story guy on the show Dude, because I can do this you, for you hours. You are good at podcasting. I'm just listening. I love <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, so when we get to Borderlands three, there's a really interesting thing you do. Now Lilith is the you know she 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 hires you. She wants the Crimson Raiders. It's her brochure that you see at the beginning. You know in the in the rock and roll intro yeah. that you get come join the Crimson Raiders. And she sends she cl- sends Claptrap out to find you, and she comes in. And you're like welcome to the Crimson Raiders. You have that moment with her at the beginning and we whether you're a new player or an existing player you have that moment to understand she's important she's a firehawk and she's powerful and and she needs you which is also makes you feel very powerful and then you do a really interesting thing you you take those powers away from her and then you have to see you know at the moment that you're getting the ship she's got all the people together you're about to go to the galaxy and now you have these new asshat villains that are, a, 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 you know, a, they're a little bit more threatening than we thought. We thought they were just kind of funny and, yeah. oh crap, they can actually suck the siren powers out of Lilith. So now all of the characters that we know and love are in jeopardy. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that we took a page necessarily out of George Martin because we were we were killing characters before before Game of Thrones got on air. I think, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> not the first to do it. But there's there's a reason that you you want your villains to have threat. You want your universe to have threat in them, and, and you do that. But Lilith's faced with this choice now. She she she's the commander on Sanctuary, but she's lost what she's de- come to depend on her her siren her abilities powers, yeah. her, to to a degree her identity. So was that moment more to give the player? the moment to rise up and feel the power or these other characters that start to rise up and get power? Everything. You All know, we, we almost never do any one thing for one reason, especially when you're, when you're, when you're, weaving together a story, right? The best moments that we can create do all of that. So yeah, the players now feel that they are more important. Lilith is going to have to depend on you more, you know, you've and you've you've had a hand in helping her out. You feel attached to her even if you're a brand new player. So there's some storytelling that we that we do in the game and that to make you feel special. But now you get to see her make choices, and you actually see a couple of moments in the game where she's now bringing in some other people. Like she has a moment with Maya, which I know we'll get to in a second. Oh, yeah. There, uh, and, and she has a moment with Ava, and she has a moment with others, like and with Tannis. Tannis really, really hits a little on that later, where where Tannis says, "You need to stay here. You're the commander. You're important." Now you send out us out on the field to, to take care of stuff. So Lilith, that's hard for her. And you sure. see her fight that. You know, she I'm going. It's time for me to go back in. I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna do it. No, no, no. And and I think when you have the whole arc now, you see the whole picture of what we did Borderlands 3, when she gets her powers back now, rather than going on a universe tear of, you know, destroying all the children of all, what does Lilith do? She realizes that Pandora, all of her friends and all of her home is still in danger, and she probably alone has the ability to stop it. And you have that great moment. You saw her phase walk in Borderlands 2. You saw her teleport sanctuary, or in, in Borderlands 1. You saw her teleport sanctuary in Borderlands 2. You saw her teleport her friends off of sanctuary in the DLC. And now the entire moon, Elpis, with, by the way, a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we remember the whole game, the pre-sequel, was set on that moon. There's a lot of places that we've been up there. She has to keep that moon from crash landing into the planet. And so she sacrifices herself. She doesn't know what the outcome of that's going to be. And the last thing that we know is her power is dispersed across the sky, you know, in place of where the moon went at the end. Yeah. So there's a lot of mystery of what happened there. Does she save the people? Is she still alive? Did she sacrifice herself to save everything? I don't know. But that decision, that that decision be that's a real matters. decision yeah, for yeah, her yeah, yeah. Is, is what's really important to see her character growth. And Lilith, I love her. Her... her self-sacrifice is one of the noblest things that anybody could ever do. You know, whenever I, I can't imagine, like I have, I have two grown kids now and, and uh, they're amazing. And when I think as a father, you know, would, uh, would I put my, yeah, absolutely. I, without a heartbeat, but when I think of other people, you know, like you, especially with that yeah. coat on, would, would hell, I, man? would I jump in the way <laughs> of a bullet for you? Season. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I love it. But, Self-sacrifice is a, is a really hard thing for any of us to contemplate. And when we see a hero do that yeah. uh, in a story, especially when we've built up to that moment, you really see that, 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 that coming together. And that's, that's what I love about a little, you know, she, she did that. And I think it really just elevates her in my mind. And, and hopefully, you know, even though we kind of killed her off, you know, is at least what it looks like now. Yeah. Um, I hope other people appreciate 
who Lilith is for that, and oh, totally. feel a, a deep a deep connection with her as someone who loves her friends and is willing to give everything to keep her friends safe. You said something interesting a while back when you're talking about this and describing it, like something of it, like it's Lilith's game kind of thing. It's her story. It's this. Is is she the main character of Borderlands Three? Like, do you when you think of the Borderlands story, is it a Lilith story? Yeah, I mean, it kind of, it really kind of is. You know, you, you we we think about it in terms of of kind of three different camps, right? The the player characters uh, have to feel important. I, I know one of the criticisms we've heard on some of the writing of story this time is they felt a little bit more detached than before, and it's something we're going to be looking for in in the future to try to keep that up. But but your our player characters, you know, and we have a trend of, of they become uh, NPCs in the next stories, and so maybe you'll see that with these player characters too. We're definitely yeah. thinking about that, and we've done yeah. it before. Um, and then we think about who's the the kind of the chief NPC protagonist in Borderlands 2. It was Roland. It kind of passed over to Lilith, you know, and then you kind of had some others that, that were kind of supporting cast in that. Uh, in Borderlands 3, yeah, it really is Lilith. And I think that's the other thing at the end. We wanted a very satisfying end to an arc because, it, you know, as much as we love a character, we've got a lot of characters. Yeah. And we've got a lot of characters that are favorites, some that we didn't even get to in the main game of Borderlands 3. Uh, and we want to be able to grow and spend time with those characters and places. So we wanted to be we want to be able sometimes to to write a character's end to, to an arc right now so that we can, if not if not remove them from the story or the impact of the future, at least let them take a break. Yeah. You know, and, and move on. We've got a lot of stories that we want to tell. And and one of the 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 coolest new things is new characters. So we hope to to do that more. But yeah, it's it's to get back to your very original question. It is very difficult to make these decisions, and we don't. This was never someone walks in one day and says, "You know what? We one of the four characters we're going to kill in this game. <laughs> List them up right now." It's, we need four of them to go. No, you 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 really use those moments well, and and there's a lot of thought that goes behind it. And I know I've read a lot of really great comments from players of some people who really loved it and got it, some people who were like, "I didn't think it was impactful enough," and that you really felt it. And those are, you know, I can't disagree with all that. Every we all we all process interpret yep. the story. Yep. differently uh, we certainly want to be respectful to our our characters and to the the love that our players have for our characters and want to treat them well so we're, we're always listening and looking for that and hopefully we'll continue now that especially now that we have a story group yeah. we'll, we'll really keep that memory in our group and every time we we expand and write the universe we'll do better and better and better at keeping you interested in what's going on, but we're not afraid to kill. No, uh, and I think that keeps. I think the stakes are really important. The sure. universe has Borderlands is a dangerous universe. You're gonna you're gonna catch something from from core you know uh, from from core you know, from exposed sheet metal that's lying around you. You're gonna get a disease. <laughs> you better have, better come to Borderlands with your tetanus shots. Is what I'm saying, right? Yeah. And it's full of crazies and crazy things that that want to kill you for no reason. So we've got to keep that thread in there. It's interesting because I do feel like you know I thought one of the things that was interesting that stood out to me when I was reading uh, comments and I continue to see it every so often, right? Like the on Reddit funny memes and cartoons, right, of uh, the, uh, Lilith handing it over to Ava, right? All right, the Ra- you're in charge of the Raiders now when she <laughs> runs off. <laughs> and people, like, you know, their Vault Hunter is like, sh- like, I just killed everybody. I just did all this. But I've never looked, you know, when I've played Borderlands, I've never looked at any of my Vault Hunters as th- they're the main characters. It's my story in the world and in the overarching plot of what's happening. But it's not that... To me, Flack is the, you know, he's got the narrative thread, right? He doesn't go through the journey and the change. Like, granted, I'm putting in my right. skills, I'm making my own memories, I'm playing with friends, but in reality, it's me watching what's happening around these people that I'm helping for my own needs. Right. And, and there's there's actually some intentionality behind that. We may alter that a little bit in the future because, again, I think players feeling that they have an impact on the mm-hmm. events that are going on is important. But I know in Borderlands 1 and 2 in the pre-sequel, we kind of like you to own that player character for your own story, yeah, right? Yeah. So giving you a choice of how you want that player character to look, how you build out the gear, uh, and, and to a degree, even a little bit of how, you know, in your, your mind, you're, you're, you're determining why did I do this as flag? Why right. did I prioritize this mission over right. that mission? Or did I choose to kill Jack? I, we we, we, we want to give the player a lot, as much agency as we can into letting those players be their own. While still, we, we got this comment from Borderlands 2. We, they love that we added more backstory. They love that we, we've got a lot, of, I've seen a lot of positive feedback in Borderlands 3 on the amount of dialogue that we added for player character with interaction. Totally. We actually had about half as much uh, as, as late as February this year. And we were doing some of our, our first long through play tests in the story. 
story. That was one of the big pieces of feedback we got from our playtest users internally. It's like, I'd like to hear this talking a lot more. We doubled the amount of player response lines in the event on this. And I think that's some of the most effective writing that we did in Borderlands 3 as far as making you feel interested in hearing little things uh, across the universe, right? Mm -hmm. You talked about the writing right there and earlier as well with, you know, you uh, when somebody takes this in and they consume your story, they consume your writing, obviously they interpret it their own way and they have their own tastes and values and everything else that comes out. It's easy to say that. Had you and the other four writers, or the other writers on the, the other three writers in the game, steeled yourself for this? Of uh, you think you've got the funniest joke in the world, and then to have people get there and be like, "I wish I could just turn the jokes off. I play it on mute." Uh, I always like. I'm always gonna say yes, yes. <laughs> we as the you wipe away a manly tear. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, totally. Our, we were fun. Our emotionless concrete statues of impervious <laughs> feeling. <laughs> you know, that review didn't sting at all. Uh, no, it's tough. There's, there's a, there's a, there's a really great quote that I, I cling to from Neil Gaiman, who's one of my favorite oh, yeah. writers, American Same Gods, man. and all that. Who says when when people tell you and I'm, I'm going to get the quote wrong? People can look it up later and all that. But it's when people tell you that there's something wrong with your writing, they're almost always right. <laughs> when they tell you how to fix what's wrong mm. with your story, they're almost always incorrect. Yeah. And I, I like that. And I think it's one of the things you have to understand because, and the reason they're correct are not because people aren't aren't smart, but because there's often a lot of lifting that we're doing behind the scenes and, and crafting a story and crafting a narrative like we put this here and you may not like it but it's really here to support these other three things and and we have to constantly be vigilant and, and work on that to try to be sure that that we're uh, addressing things like when people tell us like i didn't i didn't like that humor like uh, it's been one of the things that we saw a lot like humor is hit or miss like like all writing it's very subjective but when when people write in like way too many poop jokes like okay Hey, maybe so. And we actually, I was saying earlier, we actually, we actually looked at, you know, poop and fart jokes. Like, did, did we do too many? I mean, we've done them in other Borderlands. I just thought that it was okay to like, uh, there's a portion of Borderlands humor that's irreverent and immature. And, and I think if we cut those completely out, we would be doing another disservice to the franchise yeah. and, and not being true to our roots and our ground. But it just turns out that sometimes when, when everybody remembers that, like we had this, we have this really like it's like a perfect storm of, 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 of poop humor that can happen in <laughs> Borderlands. <laughs> if you play the game in the right way and do certain side missions and really, just get lucky with some loot drops and all that, you can like have an experience that in the course of of, uh, of 30 minutes, uh, you, I mean, you can just just uh, all poop jokes all of a sudden. Honestly, just just uh, <laughs> just uh, I, I don't know what the maturity level of this this podcast is. A poop storm. Uh, well, you can uh, say shit storm. A no, shit storm. For, yeah. Okay, <laughs> then, then it's a. An variable shitstorm, you know, honestly, there's, you know, the porta potty mission, there's a poop gun, the Goliath yeah. can fart on you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tyreen can tell you you're a turd burglar, you know, there's all sorts <laughs> of things, and it, all those things were written kind of at different times, and sometimes not even all by the writing group, we, you know, when we, we look at all the text and everything that goes in the game, sometimes it's a, it's a creature, creature designer, a mission designer that's naming an object, or coming up yeah, with, yeah. with that on there, or pitching a mission, like, we, we write all of the spoken text and pull it all together, but the creativity is not limited even just to the writers and our team, so, we as a team, you know, have those moments that, like, yeah, there were moments that, that it probably got a little too deep, uh, and so we're we're looking at that, and we're we're asking actually asking good questions, like, okay, Borderlands has where where do we need to uh, modernize and advance our humor and our wit? Where do we need to leave it alone? Yeah, and that's a really interesting debate that's going on right now. And and hey, thank you. Uh, I just say it right now to our community, mm -hmm. our fans. Your discussions are really great. The, and I'll just add a note. Like, hey, I love criticism. If you're going to do it and you're going to say worst writing ever, tell me why. Yeah, where and why. And, and the more specific you can be with that, the more helpful it is for us. Like, I've read, and, and the, the other thing that's great with our community is, like, for every person that says, I really hate this fart humor, there's another person that comes in in the next, literally the neighboring thread and read it like, this is the best humor ever. Ha <laughs> ha, that fart joke was great. We've had that <laughs> podcast on Kind right? of Funny where one person's like, oh, and the other person's like, oh, I actually really, and it's like that weird trade off of everybody I feel like can get sucked in by the gameplay, right? And the, the loot and going through and grinding it out and how you ch customizing your character. But yeah. then these it, little things that like they're getting caught off guard by. Yeah, it's like trying to tell someone their favorite music or their favorite books or food or whatever. It's, it's like, you can't tell me that I don't like that. Yeah, I yeah. like that fart humor and some people don't. So yeah, you're met with both sides of it. Um, we have we have the debate internally too. I mean, this this debate rages on our team. Uh, my favorite one is there's a there's a mission 
on Promethea, and I'm uh, I'm gonna remember, forget the name of it right now, but it's the one where the the doctor uh, wants you in the in the sur- in the in the Mount Shuler surgery clinic. Okay. He wants you to go get the medicine for him, mm-hmm. and it turns out when you go there, he's got a mixtape. He's trying to be a DJ on the side, oh, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And it was it was uh, one of the things where writers came up with an idea that like, hey, I think it's kind of funny if he has this secondary thread where he wants to, he really he's a doctor right now, but he really wants to be a he DJ on the side, and he's always trying to get you to listen to his mixtape, right? And we we loved what that did totally internally though. We were at a, at a admission review early on, and there was someone. I mean, one of the senior guys at our mission was like. I don't get it. It's just not funny to me. All I right. want you to cut all that part. I'm like, but it's, we, it's hysterical. I think it's so. We're even internally having those debates all the time. Like one person thinks it's the funniest thing ever. Another person thinks it's dumb and should be cut from our game. And and I think in general we err on including more of that. Like sure. we we kind of play play we we play all the colors on the roulette wheel with humor. You know, we we have some smart humor. We have some fart humor. We have some dark humor. We have some s- ridiculous humor. Like shooting the face in Borderlands 2, you know, mm-hmm. is one of my favorite missions there, but it was dumb. Just shoot me in the face. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> it's great. And we we want to keep all of those elements in there and, and do it, but uh again, always happy to hear the the thoughts and reviews from other people. So that's very helpful. Was there anything, you know, you talk about the stuff you wanted to retain. I mean, yeah, this comedy that now goes back 10 years or so to speak, you're retaining some of that vibe. Was there anything you went in and you're like, we really want to nail this or change this? Uh, something you tried to either amp up or bring to it? Um, and I have a follow up to this. You know? Yeah, I, the, I mean, to us, I think there's a there's a really great hit and there's a there's a there's a, a something that, that was not as effective as we wanted to be. And the, the hit was. Um, we really wanted to add some more of those. Like Borderlands 2 really started, I think, explore where you have moments of real heart and real emotion mm-hmm. in the game, mm-hmm. right? And we wanted it. We definitely wanted to do more of that. Like what I love about the, even though Borderlands is known as a humorous game, I think one of the coolest things Borderlands can do and any humorous game can do, any humorous subject, Guardians of the Galaxy is one of my first favorite sure. movie examples of this, sure. is where in the moment of ridiculous, dumb humor and dumb circumstances, you have you have a disarming effect that can really open the door for really deep and, and heartfelt narrative. And I think we had more of those moments that weren't necessarily even just the ones where we kill off a major character, but where there, there are really things happening. You talk about Ava. One of my favorite missions with Ava, Ava is the one where uh, where uh, she asks you to go recover her diary, yeah. and when you mm-hmm. do, you find out this Malawan asshat, Private Beans, has gotten hit and starts reading it aloud on this, and you you suddenly have this mission that's kind of funny with what he's reading and how he's treating it, but he is delving into a teenage girl's private secrets, yeah. you know, and she hates it. And there's a part of that the the voice actress for for Ava um, who came and did it, she loved that mission because she said that happened to me. Mm. And that was a moment for me. And I remember how violated I felt and how, how exposed I felt. And I, it, it's just so she, she, it's one of my favorite kind of moments in the game that even though it's funny, man, it's like, oh, oh, oh ooh, ah, it, you, you have that, that thing that really resonates with us and, and makes you feel the character. In fact, I, I think it's, it's interesting. I think that when you look at Ava as a character, I'm not I'm all over the topics here. Do um, it. Do it Enjoy here. yourself. <laughs> You're a- the Ava's, podcast, brother. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Whatever. Like, but but Ava. Seven hours later. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to you gotta have to shut me up because <laughs> no, this is awesome. Ava's been one of these great divisive characters. Yeah, you know? I and, can't, I loved her, and I can't believe how many people are like, "What the hell?" And I'm not gonna judge anyone. I'm not gonna try to def- de- like the people who hated her. I'm not gonna say, uh, sure, sure. "Yeah, you're wrong. She's perfect." And exactly, like I, I think we could have done a little bit better with with Ava in some cases. A lot of it comes down to just space, right? Again. Mm-hmm. A lot of characters, we try. We made some choices about who you spend time with on missions and all that. And sometimes we did okay. Sometimes we didn't get. We didn't have as much time as we want. I would have loved to spend more time with Ava. But what I really love, if you watch, the, I think we really kind of look at the people who love Ava and and hate Ava. The people who love Ava have played all the side missions and mm-hmm. talk about those mm-hmm. side missions. And usually cite them as reasons they really like her and resonate with her. If you've just kind of played through the main mission thread. Ava doesn't feel like a very deep character. Sure. Uh, and we kind of have to do that intentionally because the main mission thread has to keep trucking. It has you to keep go, moving. Yeah. And she's, you know, talked about Lilith kind of is the superstar and the, the mm-hmm. Calypso twins are the, the important and your important focus villain there. We have a lot of space to cover with that. So we have to be very careful. Now, Ava gets in there in places and certainly ends up with kind of the, the Holy Grail there at the end. Like, what am I doing with this? Yeah. But uh, I, I would encourage like people who don't, like Ava right now and want us maybe look at that go go and find the, those side missions with Ava and, and play through it 
and see if that helps. I, I, I think there's some of that. We're going to spend some more time with her, even in DLCs. Oh, and so right, I, right. there's some intent there. So there's some growth. And I think there's a very, I think a very intentional valid question from us at the end of Borderlands 3 is, why the hell is Ava get Sanctuary? Because she does not deserve it. She got Maya killed. Uh, she's got no experience. She's a little <laughs> brat. She's kind of screechy sometimes. And I think that's a valid question to ask. Huh. As a player, and, and there's a little bit of the, the, the. In fact, there's more than a little bit of that. That's intentional narrative, and I think I think uh, if you see, I can't spoil it all. But yeah, I, don't I think spoil in, anything. In, in the in the DLCs, we're going to help you understand what's going there. I, I think the 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 biggest reason, if I want to answer fans from the game, we'll get then we'll we'll move off of Ava and ask other things. Uh, the biggest reason, if you want to know why Lilith gave the keys, Maya. God bless Maya, 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 Maya. Lilith respects Maya so much, and Maya saw something in Ava that that none of us have seen yet, really, mm. to the degree that mm. Maya did. Maya singled her out and decided she's going to be my my uh, apprentice. my apprentice. Even more than that, we've learned a new thing about siren powers that mm -hmm. they can be intentionally targeted to the next recipient. The first time we've ever shown that happening, and it's not always how they're, they're transferred, but it happened here. Maya believed in Ava so much that that happened. So yeah, you as the player have not seen all of that worth yet in Ava. And I'm hoping that things that you see in the future, and maybe some of the things you've seen in side missions, or if you get to other content, the game will help flesh that out a little bit more. But I think that's why Lilith really, really said, I'm okay with that. Maya's gone. I'm gone. Tannis is the only other siren, but do you really want her no, in charge want of no, people? No, no, no. Come no. On, Tannis. So Ava's there, right? <laughs> A Ava, Ava's the one. Like, man, you're really young, but Maya saw something in you. Sanctuary is yours. Earn it. There's that. There's that that we leave it with. So, I, to me, I, I love that feeling, and it's not. It's not a like future's certain going to be great. It's like, oh shit, what am I going to do with this? Yeah. And I like that feeling at the end. It's kind of a, there's kind of a bittersweet uh, uh, end to this kind of the Pandora cycle of, of Borderlands in many ways. Hmm. Yeah, what I was going to say related to this was that I felt like the uh, main highly animated, scored cinematic scenes were focused with a little more heart. I don't know yeah. if that was the intention, but I personally, I like, I actually like like dumb humor. So I like all the stuff that's going on there. Some things you take or leave, but overall, I love that vibe. But I actually almost I, I want more of that core. Whatever you guys did with the narratives, I personally really liked. I felt the heart. I felt the music composition. Um, so, yeah, I was wondering if that was the, the main intent of those is to really drive home a, a campaign story, so to speak. Yeah, it's the first time in a Borderlands game we've done more than just an intro cinematic, right? I'm really not even an exit cinematic. No, we've done the title cards, mm -hmm. which technically have, and in Borderlands 2 had a little bit of character development moment and all that, but they're they're like 10 to 12 seconds long. They're very short, and you usually only get a little bit of flavor for what that character is on a character introduction, but absolutely. The big cinematics, we, I, we consider them like pillars of the narrative story throughout, and I think they're a really great device. I mean, one of the things we even, when we started playing with the idea of those and tested them early on, we found that that like uh, playtesters who are playing the story can almost completely recall the details of uh, a, yeah. a big cinematic cutscene. Yeah. While at any point, and, and this is by the way, there's another thing that I'll acknowledge in this that's difficult for Borderlands because Borderlands is a game of game. You're killing stuff, people are screaming at you. There's a lot of things happening in your head at once, and one of the things we always have to think about and consider with storytelling is you might be going three different directions with your party. Who knows what's going to be saying? You may have just picked up a Typhon log while Ty yeah. Tyreen's trying to say something really important over here. Sometimes we have to double up on that information. Sometimes it gets stomped. Sometimes you're going to forget it. Sometimes you're not going to hear it. Sometimes it's going to, you know, whatever. So what I love about adding those cinematic beats back in is it's a good place to kind of regroup and... and, 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 and Here's uh, the important information. Yeah. Here's what yeah. you need to Absolutely. know to keep this going. Because I've noticed that too, playing with people. I can only imagine what it's like to write a game where... You're trying so hard to write funny stuff and story <laughs> stuff, and that you know that it's gonna be me and Fran being like, "So what did you do tonight? Oh, you stream right now? I'm gonna make fun of the name you just said. Haha, ha, always. I'm yeah. gonna get text. Hold on, it's Andrew Goldfarb. Let me put him on the phone. Like, I feel like when you get, oh, I've noticed when I play with people, when you get yeah. to a cutscene, people do naturally yeah. stop. Like, oh, hold up, hold up. Yep. All right, and you want to watch and you want to see what's happening. Definitely the first time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the first time. Definitely yeah, yeah. the first then time. Skip through. Stuff, yeah, where, no, where is the skip? Huh? Well. Huh? Yeah, it's uh, we're we're looking at that. Uh, we definitely understand, like, and that that's I'll say that too with pacing. Like, we definitely understand 
we and we really really do make an effort to keep the narrative from really stomping on gameplay like we, we're very cognizant of every time we're pulling you out of that gameplay loop and taking control away from you and making you watch our our, our dumb movie right for yeah, a little yeah. bit um we want to get that back in it didn't make it and, and, and in the game it wasn't it wasn't an intentional thing it's just one of those features that we we came in hot and it, it didn't make the final cut except in true vault hunter mode we let you skip there so we're looking for the next opportunity to get that in we certainly know that that's it's a point of friction for players and we really want to remove points of friction so it's not that we feel so great about our art that we want to make you watch it every time <laughs> we, we we understand like i'm look i'm a player like you and i'm playing through true vault hunter mode with my friend we're on like our third our, i'm this is actually second time through true vault hunter wow, mode with nice. me and the guys i'm playing with right and like we're all getting to the cut See him like okay, well, I'll be back. I'm gonna go get a get a drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a couple minutes. We we get it. And uh, and you got to understand me. I've seen these things like 50, yeah, 60, 70 yeah. times. So you well, saw their wireframe gray box. <laughs> yeah, I had a little. I have a little bit of joy every time I get to watch it with someone who's never seen it. Yeah. And I'm always like, I play friend. I'm on Discord with all my friends, and we're, we're we're talking there. And I'm like, I, I'm being real quiet. I'm just waiting for the reactions, and it's ah. Oh, that happened. Oh, it's it's so cool. And I'm kind of like a kid in the candy store there. But we understand that like people who just want to get the game, mm-hmm. we're going to look at that. That's something that's on our radar. We're going to see when we can work it in. And it's just, again, it, it like we the conversation we had earlier, it's all balanced against a lot, of, a lot of other content. And we're trying to make smart decisions about the actual most important things. So it, it's not forgotten. It's not unheard. And it, we... we, we Really tried not to be assholes about this, and we're we're sorry. I understand it creates a friction, so we'll look at it. It's something we want to we want to do in the future to improve the experience. Uh, we'd be remiss in the spoiler section not to talk about the Calypso Twins. Mm-hmm. Yes, where did they start? Where did that idea? Were you watching some annoying streamer like Fran, and you're like, that'd be a good <laughs> okay. villain? Did you expect them to be? Were they going to be the main villain the entire time? Because I'm stupid, as everybody knows. And so, like, when we did the Borderlands reveal event and we saw their statues in there, I was like, oh, they're like the first act boss. You know what I mean? Like, they're going to be the first thing we deal with here. I didn't think think they were the entire way. Yeah, I didn't. I thought it was like. I didn't realize they were the handsome Jack of this game. Man, uh, th- that's a great question, and I-, I like the way you put it because there's there there's such a journey through developing a story, especially this big. Um, we did not start off with the idea that they were social media streamers. Early on, there were kind of two competing threads, and, and not even competing, but they were developing at the same time. One was, hey, Handsome Jack was a really great villain. Wow, we, we've got to try yeah. to do <laughs> another really Uh-oh. great villain. <laughs> and, and in a lot of ways, Handsome Jack, you know, again, great writing and a very simple story. Borderlands 2, by the way, is you can sum it up in a sentence. Like, he tries to kill you at the beginning, and you spend the rest of the game trying to kill him back. Yeah, chase yeah. him down. Right, that's, that's the conflict of that story. And there's some other stuff that happens, but that's you can sum it up there. Like, that's, it's not that simple in Borderlands 3. And we, we did want to add a little bit more depth to the story, but that, that complicates the villain. And then, man, what a great voice actor Damien just came in yeah. and just nailed it and like those first studio sessions with him just lightning in a bottle that that stuff doesn't happen all the time even though we try to make it we work very hard and we we, we, we spend a lot of time on casting on a writing on character development sometimes it just happens and it's great and Borderlands 2 is just amazing of that so man we've definitely felt that pressure coming up to the to develop the the villains in Borderlands 3 and, and so you have that that pressure going on the other one was like hey, we know that we're going to go to other planets. That was one of the big things that we wanted to pay off on Borderlands 2. And so we started to think very early on about those other planets almost as kind of different major acts in this play. And like every act, and okay, think about the, the game structure. Okay, you work up to this point, and then you fight a villain here. And then you, you, you when we fight a villain, like we, we as gamers, we want to be able to fight, fight the villain and kill the villain. Right, it's really hard when you don't kill the villain. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it it sometimes seems like throwing away a good villain, but man, it's so dissatisfying when we built up all this and we don't let you as a player have that final agency of defeating once and all that villain. And it's always like, yoink, nope, he got in this speeder bike and rode away. <laughs> ah. So we wanted to be sure that we had act villains that could be taken down. Katagawa came on really sure. early on for that. Um, uh, um, Aurelia came on really early for that. Even even Payne and Teller came on later on as, as kind of doing that. Love and Because we, we think of each planet almost the act. Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, and the surprise Act 4. <laughs> I'm sure you'll ask about it in a second. But, but then we wanted that, that, what ties all that together? 
because you can almost think of those and you can almost see early on development. Those are almost separate short stories yeah. uh, of the, 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 the city, the city fight on Promethea, the what's going on with the dynastic struggle in Eden six. And then what's really going on with the children of vault later on. They, those are almost written as short stories. And then we wanted that, that narrative that pulled them all together. In fact, originally Borderlands didn't even begin on Pandora Borderlands three. We were going to drop you right there in Promethea where act one started and mm. like brand new, everybody you're in a city. And, and it actually, when we tested it early on, it didn't feel borderlandsy for people. It felt that we'd lost something in the franchise. And, and with seven years between main, you know, big main solid number games, right? Yeah. Um, we, we wanted to be sure that everybody, even new players coming into the franchise, had a, a, a chance to feel the essence of Borderlands. This is what Borderlands started on, is. on yeah. Pandora yeah, before that... we, we did all that. And also give us a chance to build the Calypsos, to show their recruitment and how yeah. they're building up that and, and create it. But... It was, man, it was probably two years in development that mm. the Calypsos were wow. there. And we said, we were looking at them like, man, they're just, they're not quite, that. They're, they're missing that spark that Jack had. Yeah. They're, they're missing something there and they're just elevated bandit leaders. What can we do with them? And someone said, I don't know. They're kind of in your face. What we liked about Jack is he's, he's always in your face. He's saying stuff about potato chips and, and butt stallions and all that stuff. And he's, he's, he's always... <laughs> all right, kiddo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just for no reason. He's always doing something and saying something there. And so we're like, how do we, how do we accomplish that and do it in a way that's like at least semi-relevant? And like, oh, live, live streamers. And so we started looking like there, there are there they're are, the worst. <laughs> there are no, they're they're a part of our culture, and and they're great, and they're. We, I love this world that we're in right now, yeah. and I love that finally I get to I get to make a new best friend by watching them on a stream, and and everyone so you'll say my name, and I'll feel really special in that relationship of that. <gasps> I'm I'm now part of Fran's family, <laughs> and when the we, family we call it. That's when, right. When we when we hit that, and we understood that what live streaming is about building families. It's about building social groups. We realize that, oh, or the cults. Crimson Raiders are also about building families and social groups. Lilith, more than just being a general hero, really cares mostly about protecting her family. Well, we want villains to have a family as well. So what was interesting about that is the idea that the villains were sirens and were then conjoined twins. So th those were completely independent things from all that. That's happened much earlier. Like, What's a good villain? Well, we've not done a siren as a villain before. That's cool. Sure. Let's do that. Let's give a villain mystical powers and see what we can do with it. And then, like, what's better than a villain? Two villains. And then what's more interesting about that? Well, what if they're twins? That's neat. What's more interesting than that? Oh, they're conjoined twins. And then we said, oh, what if the male is a siren because he breaks the, the, the female siren rule because he was born conjoined to the females? Mm -hmm. Like, we started thinking about that, and that, that got really exciting. And it, it's even with all that, it wasn't, it wasn't hitting. And then we came up with the idea of a family, yeah. social media being a family, it, it hit all of those notes at once. They can be in your face. They, they Now they can take this bandit cult of Pandora, which are a little bit more manipulatable. They're people who, who are, they are drawn to bright lights and big explosions. And they're, they're you know, as much as, you know, we, we call them literally, the, you know, the, the, the cult, the children of the vault. And they're cult leaders. They get these, this, this cult-like devotion from the bandits. You see all that going in at once of this, and you, you, you're like, oh, that's cool. And the moment that we started riding, riding that kind of streamer banner, the like, yeah, follow, yeah. and obey, and other stuff in it, like, oh, crap, okay, we've got, we've got personality in it now. We can go further, and, and then we can lines. push that further. Uh, and it was actually our, our own uh, um, Elisa Melendez who, yep. who does the voice, who's our one of our it. one of our uh, media managers at Gearbox, and she. So we brought him, her in because of her position. We said, "Hey, why don't you come in and read early Tyrene just while we're doing table reads on the script, and let's do that." And she brought so much color and character to that, like, yeah, that's that's something new. That's that's cool. That's awesome. And, and then we started writing that, and then we cast her because, like, now we've just written the character around you and. and you, you build up from there. So I, I like where they went. I think we probably could have gone another step for, a step or two further in like smart social commentary about live <laughs> streaming and all of that. Yeah. I was going to ask about Take that. Take a break. Don't burn out. Drink more water. Right. Well, when right. I went in, I thought, I was like, oh, they're going to make some commentary about who knows. They're the villains and maybe social media is ruining our culture. Who knows? And there actually wasn't much of that, which I think was totally fine. I didn't miss it or anything. Yeah. But I think you're right that um, you probably could, you know, you could still run with that at some point. Yeah. I've heard a couple of people that have written some really good kind of criticisms of our, of our game and the story in it that have mentioned that. And I'm like, I, yeah, I agree. And, and it was one of those hard decisions you have to make where you look at the amount of space you have for storytelling yeah. in the game. 
And we had to make some harder decisions about information that was that was more important for the overall story. So you talked about family and the streaming family and the family that Lilith had and all that stuff. When did you see that last wrinkle of like them being Typhon's children? It was it was pretty late, and it was yeah. what was interesting is there were so many like there was a time that Tyrene had the ability to leech powers. And Lilith was going to lose her powers, but they weren't related. Those were unrelated events. So we put those <laughs> together at some point. Like, oh, that's and and <laughs> Typhon, the, the idea of the first vault hunter, yeah, you know, the, the just creating this more mysticism around vaults and what they are, that was an early concept too. Uh, and it was when we had that moment of like, how can we continue to enhance the, the family theme that we said, what if, what if Typhon was there? And then we're like, oh yeah, and what if he's still alive? And what if he's on you know, in this hidden planet. And what if that explains like, like, I, I don't know how many people like, okay, super spoiler land here. I'm going to tie up some that's of the stuff that's at the end of the game, right? That's to put it together. I just want to warn people like this is <laughs> like to me, understanding that when, when, so Chirene and Troy born literally in a vault, literally in a vault. Typhon talks forever about how he and Lita, you know, kept doing it in the vault. Like <laughs> that, that had, that. that had an effect. Right. And they were born like that. I don't know how clear it is in, in the dialogue in the game. Tyrene killed her mother. So when when she realized, it was one of the first times she realized what her siren power was, the leeching. Yeah. She kills her mother when she's young. And so imagine, you know, having a four, five, six-year-old kid that has all these powers. And, and parents that kind of understand it, and that just one day, you know, you go grab mom's hand and suddenly mom's a husk. What does that do to your family dynamic? What does that do to the person? What does that do, you know, and you, you take that idea and then the idea that Typhon, who kind of understands a little bit of what's at stake here in the galaxy, he's been around, he's everything, I've got to protect the galaxy from them. I've got to hold them here. And now he's has to both be an overprotective father who can never touch his daughter mm. for fear mm. that she's going to like, oh my gosh, it's so, there's, there's some complexity to that relationship that when you start to map out what that and imagine what that might do to a character... You understand why Tyrene is a, a, the way she is, why she's all about the attention, why she wants to be a god, why she wants to get, she doesn't want limits, she doesn't want rules, she doesn't want authority, she needs to get out beyond that. And and Troy, who's a little bit smarter of the two, probably, if you really came down to it, he's a little bit more measured, a little bit more controlled, yeah, yeah. you know, he tries, but then... He has a need. He's dependent on her, and as before he get before he steals Maya's powers, he's dependent on her for actual life. Like he's, he gets really weak and really. And if he's going to do anything, she has to feed that power back to him. And he spends so long doing that, but he loves his sister and he supports her. And a lot of people I know expected the inevitable betrayal from Troy to mm -hmm. Tyrene, and we discussed that. And we actually like better, I think, at the end, that, that Troy has some family loyalty there and tried to do it. Now, he, he almost threw it away when he super leached her. You know, he almost killed her. Yeah. But it was in, in pursuit of a goal that they had always dreamed of together, even though it was probably a very misguided goal, especially for the circumstances. So, man, I love, I love the, the subtle complexity of the story. There's, I know there's, if you play, especially around with ty side missions and really listen carefully to what Typhon says when you get to Necro Feo, there's a lot of that that clicks in later. And and I, I would, you know, like, people really want to get into that. There's a lot to, to dig into there and, and find out. So, and some of it's some of the darkest, really more melancholy part of Borderlands mm -hmm. for all our fart jokes on the other end. By the way, here's this really dark, sad story of, of, a, of a family that's just been broken apart by vaults, yep. you know, and there's a really danger to that, 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 that crazy, um, stuff that happens yeah i thought it added a nice intensity to the end because i certainly didn't expect it and you've been hearing from as someone who's not really great with the lore because yeah i'm streaming while i'm playing and talking to friends and all literally that, but, the, yeah the guy we're talking about yeah, yeah. That <laughs> all his work you're wasting all his work <laughs> but uh, this is why he forces you to watch uh, his videos <laughs> but I, i'm just gonna tinder my but resignation it's the, but it's the compliment now. right yeah. which is that i knew who typhon was from listening to the logs and in general right and then for this to all come together i was genuinely like surprised and it added just a lot of intensity to the end and so dude uh, well, yeah, when yeah, Typhon well set, is finally going through his story and you're talking to you and he's saying, that, yeah, oh, and we had twins. That's when I, I literally went, oh, God. <laughs> like, I remember, <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. like, it finally clicked. I'm like, why didn't I see this? Isn't that a cool feeling, though? Isn't awesome. that a cool feeling when you've got that long term payoff and you, and we really, that's the other thing we really tried to do. Like, some of the narrative is a little obscure in places. We love it 
when we give you just enough clues that you can come to the conclusion before we tell you flat out what's yeah, going yeah. on, right? I, I, there's a part of me, I love this show because I finally get to talk about all the stuff that, that's been you know, <laughs> three or four years of us, oh, I imagine. Yeah. But I actually love it when players get to, dis- when we do well enough that the players can discover it on the, and you have that moment like, <gasps> that's yeah. a great feeling. That's the best yeah. payoff. That's yeah. a great feeling. All right. We could do this forever, yep. but yes. we still have more show to do. Yes. So you are welcome to come back. <laughs> and not, come back later Anytime. in the Borderlands show here. To do it. Instead, right now, I think, and this is untapping. Spoilers are off if you were somehow watching an hour-long <laughs> conversation single. on mute. Uh, let's talk about <laughs> it's okay, the everybody. Malawan takedown. What is going on with uh, takedown at Malawan's black site? So takedowns are a new special experience we're adding to the game. By the way, it's free content. Okay. Uh, just like Bloody Harvest is free content, but takedowns are not seasonal. This they is aren't ho- seasonal. No. Okay. Takedowns are free content you're going to get, and they'll be for the, there. For they'll the be there. existence. Okay. I, forever is a long word to use, sure, but they'll, yeah, yeah. they'll be there with the game, right? Okay. They're, they're not going to be on and off. They're going to be there uh, with the rest of the game. Uh, it is a, a really cool, it's, it's basically in-game content. It's a hard uh, uh, co-op designed to be a four-player co-op mission at level four. 50. Okay. It's going to unlock for you when you complete one, one play through the game, which you're going to be somewhere between 30 and 40 in there, depending on how many side question, quests you've you completed yeah, yeah. and all that. But it is definitely tuned at four players at level 50. And essentially what a takedown is, so the first one is the Malon Black Site uh, back, Black Site Takedown. I get all those things. Uh, Lorelei has found again Malawan. You see some of the, the Malawan Black Ops there on Necro Feo, that end planet yep. we just talked about. They've got a secret research lab somewhere bringing in new tech that that potentially is going to be very, very dangerous. And Lorelai, I love Lorelai, our, our kind of our, our barista on the ground trying to be <laughs> sure that she's defending her peeps there in the city. Uh, she's worried that Malawan now is going to bring that to bear in the war back on the and, and renew the war on Promethea. And like, that's bad stuff. So she called you the vault hunter to go and take it down. So it's really story light. That's a, there's going to be a little bit of that. You're going to, you're going to get a character and all that, but it's, it's kind of story light because we want them, this to be a repeatable experience. Oh, interesting. you can go right. and, and play again. So is there specific loot tied to it? Yes. Okay. Yes. So level 50, four player co-op. You can, as soon as you unlock it, you can go play it. You can go play it single player if you want. I know some people are going to try, but it really is balanced balance for level 54 player. You said this does unlock only if you finish the campaign? You have to finish the right. campaign once for it to unlock. So if you've already done that, you're just going to, when it when it goes live, you're just going to be able to jump right in gotcha. with your, your buddies and all that. So uh, it's going to, you're going to get to fight some mini bosses and there's a big boss at the end. It's it's almost like, it, it is a unique area. It's a new map. Okay. Uh, and you're going to play through. It's got some other encounters. We'll have some new Malawan enemies. Okay. One of my fa- there's, there's two I'll, I'll talk about that are kind of cool. I don't want to spoil all of them. One of them is a new variant of the Malawan Shield Trooper that actually mm. will absorb elemental damage. Okay. Which strengthens its shield, and if it gets built up too far, it'll shoot it back at you. Right? So it's going to change the gameplay loop with certain elemental types, which is going to be really cool. Another one is a Malawan Stealth Trooper. So you like the guys that run real fast? How about ones that are just completely invisible most of the time? I don't like that. So, sure. yeah, <laughs> it's actually really fun. We're playing we're playing with it right now, and we're really enjoying it. There will be some little tells and stuff, and they'll come in and out, but it's a really neat game mechanic. But you're going to play through all that, get the bosses, and yes unique loot that you can only get here. So uh, one of the big things that we're going to introduce here is some of the best shields in the game. Probably the, the at the time that they came, our goal is that these are the best shields in the game at the time that this content launches. Uh, again, some really it's great new shield. shield. And brand, brand new content. There's also going to be heads and skins, as well as, I think, at least one trophy that you can get to Hell say yeah. I've done it right. You can put back in your, your trophies, crew Trophies, fancy. <laughs> get off that yeah, PC. Come on consoles. over. Maybe, maybe some other stuff, but maybe some other types of loot. I'd be surprised if we don't add some kind of gunner there and there, but but shields is going to be the big focus on this okay. one, so it's going to be really cool. But yeah, it should be a really great experience. It's meant to be that kind of high tier. It's, it should be really hard the first time you play it, and mm-hmm. there are some, by the way, there are some true Vault Hunter uh, variants that come in, so like if you are a player really seeking to challenge yourself at the top of that, then you're going to want to play this True Vault Hunter Mayhem That's what I was gonna Mayhem so 3. You apply all the yep. same difficulty. Yep. Yep. Right, now, right now that's the way it's working. We'll see when it when it launches, but that's the plan right now. So you want to play right there to really challenge yourself and all that. And it should be if we do our work right hard. Yeah, <laughs> and you should get the drops hopefully too for putting. In the yeah, it, it's it's targeted at about a thirty minute play, so okay. kind of like the uh, probably a little bit longer than the proving grounds right now, but not too long. We still like that you can come play a session, either then either replay it or take a break, come back tomorrow. It's it's designed to be replayable content. Uh, and we want you to actually go and get it. We want you to dissect character builds. You know, we build specific character builds and find specific gear sets that are just great on this. You know, we expect that, you know, even Corrosive. though we're targeting it 30 minutes once, once, you know, by the time that you're 
four player team really digs into it, you're gonna mm-hmm. they're gonna be speed runs. Sure. We're gonna commit it. All of that's gonna be great. And we, we want want all that to happen. Sorry right. if I missed it. And just for clarity, is it match made as well as you put your own team together? I don't actually don't know. That's the one thing. I, no, is I, the story. I, I withdraw. Probably. Hold on a second. We have the power right now. We're gonna put it up here. Is it match made or? Is it? And well, you can put it right there. It's like it's like oh, Bill well, and Ted, right, where they put the keys up there. There you go. There's your answer. It's the obvious. It's right answer. there. It the you edit it in after. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's how easy you can do it, Fran. It's the magic of video it is production, Greg. When's it coming out? Mellow One Takedown is on its way out on November 21st. So just uh, just a few weeks away. Yeah. Ooh, excellent. Close to Thanksgiving for us, Greg. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And if you're Canadian, not that close to your Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're British, we're still not sure if you we're have. We're still not sure about that one. Yet. You know yep. what I'm excited about, mm-hmm. Fran? The new shift key. That's right, everybody. We have a shift key for you. We're putting it on screen right now for you to go get the Halloween heads. These, of course, dropping right now. This is it. This is their debut. They're never before seen. You go get them right now with that shift key. You enjoy it. And that's why you should watch the show live. If you're watching it after, obviously, you can just get it in the then, comments. Yeah, somebody tweeted it, and you're like, oh, that's cool. You don't even understand the excitement of what we just did, people. Yeah. Now, Randy. Yes. Of course, a big part of this show is the mailbag. You, ladies and gentlemen, mailbag. can be a part of it. Kindoffunny.com slash Borderlands with your questions, comments, and concerns. I want to start with Marcus. Marcus has a specific question that you've already answered, but I want to twist it, all right? Marcus asks, Twist it up. Will the Malawan takedown and any future takedown events be a limited time event, or will they remain in the game after they release? Yeah. You've already said Malawan takedown is in the game yeah. from here on out. That's a thing. It's not seasonal like Bloody Harvest. Yeah, which is about six weeks for Bloody Harvest. Right. Yeah. Why the difference? Why why make anything like why make something like Bloody Harvest something that's going to go away? Yeah, we, we want to balance the idea between new reasons to come back to the game and reasons to continue playing the game over a long time, right? The seasonal event's really cool because it's like, it's here for a little bit. You have that excitement. I want to come in. I want to get this. And I think every time, you know, you see a seasonal event, we're going to try to add some some content that's brand new for that season that's going to be available just then. It's cool to, to share that experience with the community, come back together to get back in on a long-term game like this. And takedowns, we, we like that long-term event. We like that content out there that's really difficult. It's got some good rewards in it, but you're really going to need to commit some time and some energy to, to building up to that to playing it over time so we honestly the the plans of this game it's layers upon layers upon layers of content that we want to get to users so that that, that users players fans (laughs) uh whatever i i I used to work in software whatever Uh, (laughs) but we we want to get we want to get all that content out and all sorts of different types so there's always something new to come back and check out right yeah, yeah I, I think, I mean, personally, like, I love Halloween. It's my favorite holiday. So the fact that I couldn't tell, Greg. No, <laughs> really? The fact that there is a seasonal event, right, in the game that isn't going to, like, it would be weird to play the Halloween content in February. Yeah, it, I mean, it would. Ooh. It would. So off. Can I hit him with his first big question up here? Sure, go for Ooh. it, Fran. James Herbert. And who does he mean? Uh, it doesn't say, Greg. Uh, it says Flack, actually. Uh, okay, yeah, Flack, there actually. it is, the I best, guess. Hard to say. character. <laughs> Flax awesome, but I'm a Zane guy. All right, anyway, James Herbert asks, when can we expect to see the first increase in the level cap? Uh, it is coming. Oh! Exclusive details. I didn't even expect that much. I didn't, I, I didn't know if he'd have been prepped for this question. <laughs> so you didn't notice the sentence, comma. But not soon. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, uh, we, so we, it's in here. we definitely have level cap increases planned, just like we have for our previous Borderlands title. Sure. So it will, what will come. Uh, I don't have a date that I can commit to yet. Um, uh, we're, we're still working out the best place. But, you know, Borderlands 2, they came sometimes with major DLCs. Like, we have a lot more uh, type of events and patches we're adding in. So who knows? But uh, definitely, definitely coming. I, think I will know. confirm that they're coming. I think you know. That's good uh, enough. That's all right. I have an idea. I was going to say, I think he has a rough plan. Right? He knows the rough plan. <laughs> Ish. I know the rough plan, but like I said, we like we are still trying to stay agile for new things coming in from the community that we want to respond to. And then we've got, we're very ambitious with our content this time. So we want to be sure. sure that all that comes in. And we want to balance how you grow. Like there, there, you know, we have mayhem modes. The takedown is a new way to grow and get, get, get gear and all that. We're going to add that bloody harvest has new things to collect. We want to be sure to pace all those things out. So we, you know, there's always some reason to come back and play a little bit more, try something new. So I have an idea of when it's coming and I think it's going to be exactly the right time for people. Right around ish. What I was going to say is actually, I'm with you as, and probably a lot of the community, like we're still fixing up some of these loot drops, these nerves. I don't want to have to chase down a ton a new power yet until I can get all the stuff I want in the right yeah. place. And so I actually, I think that's fine. 
Oh, good. I'm glad it's got yeah, fans I'm with, well, I'm with oh, them on well, that. Well, I have the Fran seal of approval now. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's a, <laughs> well, we can wait another you year. Go. You have the Zane seal of approval. Kristen writes in <laughs> to Borderlands, uh, the show, uh, uh, kindoffunny.com slash Borderlands. I got a lot of URLs in my head, and I'll tell you, <laughs> yeah. there's a struggle right there to grab the right one. Uh, at the end of, and this is for you, your story group, right? You're the head of this now. This is it. Okay. At the end of Borderlands, the pre-sequel, the Watcher warns us that, quote, war is coming, and we're going to need all the Vault Hunters we can get. But the main story in Borderlands 3 doesn't seem to be the war that the Watcher is talking about. Is this something that will be further elaborated on the incoming DLC for Borderlands 3? When we go to that war, it's probably bigger than a DLC can contain. Mm -hmm. Like if you're talking an all Vault Hunter war, you're talking talking about something that's that's a main thematic of the game. Oh my so god, it's going to be your battle royal. <laughs> all Vault Hunter War where all it's going to be everybody you know you plus a whole bunch more <laughs> so we are definitely aware that we've left that hanging uh, it was very intentional that we did not address that yet on Borderlands 3 and I think some of the reasoning there is we wanted to go ahead and open up the galaxy and we wanted to do that before we talked about this giant multi-vault hunter everywhere. That makes smart. War on That's it. So, smart. The, the, so much of the sub-theme on Borderlands 3 was about opening up the galaxy and, and realizing there are other planets and there are other places and there are other, other people. So we, we know that that question is out there. Uh, you pr I don't, uh, you, I'll just say, you aren't going to see anything with a vault hunter war in our DLCs. Okay. I think you're going to be very, very happy with what we've done with the DLCs. And, and, and there's some really cool, you know, we were talking earlier about time for character development mm -hmm. and to really grow that. You're going to see some more of that that I'm, I, oh, I wish I could say anything, but you're going to have that on the next show and start talking about that. It's some really exciting stuff coming That's up. That's right. First DLC details. Next, next show. show. Make sure to tune Fran, in. you want to take the next question? Absolutely. Uh, Keen McCritchie asks, it is also a flack. Shocker. Uh, <laughs> Fran! <laughs> How do you come up with so many amazing ideas for Borderlands 3, mainly the guns? How did you come up with some of them, like the king and the queen? You know, I think in terms of, like, he's probably getting, or uh, they are getting the abilities and, and names and everything. Like, is how do you guys do it? Man, it's a, it's a team effort. Like, I've got to give a lot of credit. So, uh, like a lot of things, you know, I talked about how in, in previous Borderlands we had one writer, and then we have four. The gun team uh, was essentially one gun designer, Borderlands 2, mm. and now it's a team. <laughs> uh, right. So uh, every place we wanted to really commit to expanding and, 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 and building on the promises we made in the lot, we added more people. Amazing team on Borderlands 3. Uh, I, Jet and Jimmy and Kevin and Grant, like these guys are, they were designers. And I'll, I'll say this. Uh, most of those guys were, uh, were, were character designers or big system designers on Battleborn, which let us play around with a lot of different types of gameplay styles and archetypes and all that. One of the best things that I love that we got out of Battleborn is we really leveled up a lot of designers that then took that energy and, and funneled it right into... into to, so I think you, you see a lot of just growing up over time as Gearbox, yeah. our designers getting, getting even better. And then, honestly, we put those guys in a room together and we said, Go! And uh, they they did. They really yeah. came at it. And, and there's some intentionality to it, too. Like, we knew that, like, we don't want to just have the same guns again, you know, in the game. What can you do to take every weapon manufacturer that we've done, and how do you build on all those promises? Mm -hmm. So if you notice, like, all of the weapon manufacturers that returned all had at least one new twist. Like, even even though, J like, Jacobs is a great example. Even though it's still, you know, if it, it takes more West. than one shot, you're not using a Jacob, and it still has the Old West styling. The big new thing that we added now is if you get a headshot, it, it ricochets into yes. another enemy. So it adds another skill loop on what was already a cool skill loop on Jacob. So there's a lot of thought from those guys and, and other people on the team throwing ideas in. And then just a lot of craziness in the back end of them trying to come up with every ridiculous legendary they ever have. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the, man, the manufacturer play style, so to speak, is really cool. Like you get adapted to yeah. it, whatever. You're a Tediador, like you're usually throwing yeah. that thing out in the wild <laughs> and it's doing something. But that's a totally different play style. Well, that's thing. why it was funny to add in the about. brand loyalty stuff, yeah. right? Where it actually rewards you. And it, it's like, oh, man, I'm using the same guns over and over again, which was interesting. And then encouraged me to go play other ones. But again, I'd go in and like... I don't like this. You yeah. know what I mean? That's not you what I want to use. your play style. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's cool. Uh, final question comes from Patrick, who wrote in. Right. Kindoffunny.com slash Borderlands. Don't say the question until you say who their character is. I'm still explaining where he was going to send it, Fran. <laughs> Patrick is an outlier and a weirdo. He plays his name. <laughs> oh, okay. You're going to get some <laughs> flack for that guy. Oh! Bada bing! End the show credits. <laughs> Patrick says... Uh, 
Since we saw the return of Zero and Maya from Borderlands 2, what is the possibility that we will be seeing the remaining vault, Borderlands 2 Vault Hunters in the future with respect to the DLC? P.S. Can't get enough of Borderlands 3. It's definitely my game of the year. Oh, well, thank you. That, that, that Hashtag same. Uh, there's a chance. We, we have a habit of, of never letting characters go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I notice even with this one, a lot of, a lot oh, of familiar faces popping up. Which is, man, it's a massive challenge. Like, you know, I, I saw, like, when, when you had that scene at the at the end of uh, the last Avengers movie where everybody's oh, yeah, brought yeah, back yeah. on scene for the one, we felt that same thing. It's like, oh my gosh, we got so many characters. How are we going to work them back in? Oh, it's so little time. And did you uh, feel like you had to? We felt that there were like we like I said we we're always in the community and we yeah. read we read yeah. great notes like this here of like this is my favorite character when they're coming back. I'm like, oh, Never. as soon as we can find a place. So uh, we we had we had to make some hard decisions on characters to to push back to other places. So um, uh, I I won't say who. Okay. But there will be other vault hunters from Borderlands Two that will return in DLCs. Okay. Definitely that that definitely will happen. It's not all of them. Okay. Uh, and I hope we made the right decisions. I'm sorry for for people that your favorite you character doesn't everybody. come back. <laughs> uh, but there there are some that will return. So there are some characters that you've not seen yet in the Borderlands Three main game that will show up in Borderlands uh, in the in the DLCs that that will hopefully fans will love how they show up. That was awesome. Awesome, Randy. Yes, I could talk to you for hours about yeah, this. Yeah, this is. I know. We definitely gotta... need to come back at some point because <laughs> yeah. I love to keep talking about. Oh, it. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. But no, you were great. great. Thank you so much. Thank you for Borderlands Three. Oh, it's a well, great game, great story. A lot of Dollar people job. back at Dallas. You know, now I get to read the credits. Is that what we do at the end? Yeah, exactly. Now, you, now there's an unskippable cutscene for them to yeah. see. Right? A lot Ooh. of great people we don't have time to give credit for, but the team the team says thank you, and and it's it's a joy to make this, and it's a joy to to be able to interact with you guys as fans and our broader fan base. So thank you. It's been a, it's been a it's been a joy to be here. Thank Thanks, you and so congrats. much, yeah. Fran. Yes. It's been a joy to be here with you as well. Always, Greg. But the show's no not over yet. No, I'm you quiet now. No, there's none of that. There's none of that. None of this Zane stuff. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it was such a hit in episode one. Here's Ask a Psycho. Ask a Psycho. Patrick from Illinois asks, Psycho, how are you celebrating Bloody Harvest? Easy. With my jack-o'-lantern. Tell me what you know about DLC 1, Jack. Tell me. Tell me what you know. <laughs> Ask a psycho. Thanks for watching the Borderlands show, everybody. Fran, did you have a good time? I had a great time talking story, talking takedown, getting shift codes. Yeah. It's a good show. You should watch more of them. How are you still crazy about the golden keys? Are you still redeeming them every time? Oh, I hoard them. I'm I'm <laughs> waiting to see you know what, what are you hoarding them for? You're you gotta you wait for it. the right time and the right event, Greg. The right loot balance. It's a very specific formula. I'm in there left and right. I'm I got like 25 of them almost, so oh I can just, just sit in there. Spend some of them. Have some fun. Nah, not yet. Make sure you're following Borderlands on social media so you can find out when the next episode of the Borderlands show is right now. Targeting November 18th ish. 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 As you know, things change <laughs> quite often in the run ups to this show. What's going on with content? Who can fly where? So we're saying that end of November ish. You won't want to miss it next month, ladies and gentlemen. Randy Pitchford from Gearbox is joining us to finally and fully reveal DLC number one for Borderlands 3. Can't wait to see that. That's going to be a big show. And just like Randy today, I got some questions for Randy That's Pitchford. That's right. All right. Huh? I got some Get questions. <laughs> uh, make sure you uh, be part of this show, kindoffunny.com slash Borderlands. Uh, uh, you can go over and follow them on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Borderlands. You can subscribe to YouTube.com slash Borderlands Game so you never miss an episode of the Borderlands show or whatever else they put up there. I don't really pay attention. If it's not me, if it's not I'm not show, clicking, Greg, on, I mean, I'm not clicking on it. You know what I mean? No, when definitely. they got the best, well, I watch the rest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Until next time, Vault Hunters, like, follow, and obey. <laughs> <laughs>